have to wait for city manager. Because we can't start without city manager. Oh, I hear you. I know. <laughs> I want to give him a chance to recover. Oh, we are no worries. I know. That's a lot. Good afternoon, everybody. It is now uh, 1.02 on October 1st, and I'd like to welcome everybody to Commission Chambers. Those present are Commissioner Emmerich, Vice Mayor Luke, myself, Mayor McDowell. We also have Commissioner Hanks. Um, City Clerk, do we have Commissioner Carasone joining by phone? Or? No, we do not. No? Okay. Um, we also have our City Clerk, our Recording Secretary, Ms. Hale, and City Attorney and City Manager. Um, at this time, I would like to have Misty Elmore please come up and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, Ms. C. I do appreciate it. Thank you. And Misty is with our Northport Police Department. So thank you for doing that for us today. All right. Uh, I guess at this point we'll get an approval of the agenda, please. So moved. Second. Motion to approve the agenda by Vice Mayor, seconded by Commissioner Emmerich. Seeing nothing to speak about, let's go ahead and take the vote. There we go. And that passed four to zero with Commissioner Carasone absent. Um, so at this point, let's go ahead and do the public comment. Do we have any general public comment cards, Vice Mayor? You have one. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Kristen Denton, come on down, please, and stand over there. Um, state your name for the record. And you do have three minutes, and thank you for joining us. I have, I'm sorry? Three minutes, Mayor. Oh, okay. Well, hi, my name is Kristen Denton. I'm not a great speaker, so please bear with me. Good afternoon to everyone. Um, basically, I'm here Could today. Could you remove your mask? So oh, we okay. Can hear you? Thank you. Thank you. Even better. Okay, so basically, the reason why I'm here today, I'm pretty sure that this is probably not a new um, information to you guys, but I recently moved into the area of Northport, loving it, by the way, and basically, we have no internet. Now, we live in 2020. Times have changed. I've had neighbors who've lived here about 15 years and had no internet access. And I have two children, I'm a single mom, and now with the whole COVID situation, they have to be doing school online. And it is really hard, especially with satellite service um, that they're giving, it's not giving much of anything, um, but it's $200 a month just to keep up with just the bare minimum service, and it's not even enough. It can barely stream anything or anything. Just imagine you guys without your, your phone for the day. You go crazy. So imagine me being home and can't even, my children can't even be homeschooled. And um, it's a, just a very big problem. Now, the one internet provider that is out there is Frontier right now, which is not taking any new customers because they've reached their capacity. They've reached their cap. And the people who are receiving it is only getting one to two megs um, per second, which is barely enough to even open an email, much less to have your child Zoom their classroom on, online. So I just want you to see how much this is a big concern. Now, I've reached out to a lot of the different providers that they have. Um, they are able to build in the area, but again, they're saying um, the city is the one who needs to give access or permission for them to build, and it's the money. If not, they'd have to pay 35, I would have to come out of my pocket, $35,000 to supply the whole neighborhood that has never gotten internet service. So this has been a very big problem, and I love my neighborhood. My kids are, you know, just want to be able to interact with, you know, school, social life, 
and as well myself. And I just took a new position. I am in healthcare, and I have to now start working sometimes from home. And I can't get to do that. I have to either drive, leave my kids home, and drive somewhere where I can get service or signal just to work for a few hours and then come back home. So I think that it's really, really a big problem that needs to be addressed or looked at, please. <laughs> we have no internet and people have petitioned prior to this. So like I said, I'm pretty sure this is not anything new to you guys, but it is a big problem and I'm hoping someone can look into it today. So I take it you live out in the estates area? Um, actually, I live... I don't even know where the estate is. <laughs> okay. What, what general area? Um, I'm off of, uh, Flor I'm on Florida Terrace, off of the Ponce de Leon. Okay, so that's... And they say that I'm 200 feet away from the pole. Okay. So they, that's why they're not able to... But I've heard that they've AT&T has come and run lines there, so but nothing has been done. What I'm going to ask is for the city manager to have somebody from staff get with you mm -hmm. and explain how hard we are trying to get internet throughout many dead areas in our city. Um, believe me, if there was a provider that wanted to provide service, mm -hmm. the city would not be telling them no. It's, it, they don't get too much return on their investment. That's why they're not too eager to do this. Um, and I also wanted to see if maybe staff could get me your contact information okay. because I have a couple resources that may be able to help you with your children and, and the technology for school. Mm -hmm. So um, at this time, thank you very much for coming. Yes, okay. this is not anything new to us mm -hmm. and staff will get with you okay. and give you an update and explain some of the constraints that we are running into. Okay, no okay. problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. We have city manager just give a brief one minute of what it is. I mean, as long as this has gone on publicly, because they are telling her that it's on the city and it's not. So it's, it's easy to do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but as you know, um, we've had many conversations um, started before even I was in this position. But as, as long as I've been in this, this position, we've been working hard. We've contacted every major provider, even some non-major providers. As it stands right now, Frontier is actually in the process of installing high-speed internet. They're working through the processes. I'm, I don't know when they'll be done, um, but it is at least movement, which is more than we've had for at least the last three plus years. Um, as you know, it's not the city. We cannot um, be an internet service provider. We're, as far as us blocking them from doing it, we are exactly the opposite. We've been trying to get them to put this in, this infrastructure in place for a long time, um, to the point where we even said, if the, the return on investment comes up a little short, let us know and we'll see what we can do to finance it, to make up that gap. But it's, it's finally coming. Um, there are multiple options that we're working for. Frontier is probably the most viable one that's in the, in the nearest future. Thank you, city manager. All right, thank you. Um, do we have any online public comments, city clerk? No, we do not. Thank you very much. So at this time, let's go to welcome our new employees, uh, city manager. Thank you, Mayor. I'll have uh, Ms. McDade come down to introduce our new employees. <laughs> Good afternoon, for the record, Christine McDade, Human Resources Director. It's my honor and pleasure to stand before you today to introduce some of our newest team members here at the city. When I call your name, please stand where you are. From Fire Rescue, we have Nicholas Jacino, Firefighter EMT Apprentice. Kevin Lockhart, Firefighter Paramedic Apprentice. And also we have Joseph Tempio, Firefighter EMT Apprentice, all from Fire Rescue. From Neighborhood Development Services, we have Noah Fossick, Planner. From the Police Department, we have Joseph McGrath, Public Safety Telecommunicator. From Public Works, we have Jason Beverlin, Solid Waste Equipment Operator. Okay, no problem, understandable. So on behalf of the city, I just want to welcome all of you and wish you well in your new positions here. Thank you. Welcome. 
Welcome, everybody. All right, so uh, city manager, it's my understanding we have a presentation by the police department. Yes, ma'am, we do. As you know, we go throughout the departments and they all do a presentation to give you all an update on some of the newest things in their department. Um, so rather than getting away, I'll introduce the, the police chief and the deputy chief to do their departmental presentation. Good afternoon, Todd Garrison, chief of police. My deputy chief, Chris Morales, is also here. Man, time flies. It seems like I just did this. Uh, you would have thought COVID would have slowed it down. I know, right? <laughs> but uh, I'm honored to stand here and uh, present our, uh, well, what happened here? That's all. Our uh, presentation for the Northport Police Department for 2020. Several of our accomplishments, accomplishments that we are proud of is the completion of uh, security operations for the Atlanta Braves. However, the spring training season was cut short. The games that we had out there um, did go very well, and we worked out a lot of the kinks that we saw during that very first game that we worked uh, last year. We also established a professional development plan for officers and telecommunication operators. This was a priority when I took over as chief um, to work on, and my staff did a phenomenal job uh, also working with the CBA uh, and creating this plan and HR. Um, it, was a, it was a team effort, and uh, we're very proud of the product that's come before us. We completed the annual report for 2019. Uh, we completed phase two of hiring four officers for the West Villages um, area, so currently now we have eight police officers that are patrolling the West Village area. We were awarded a $150,000 grant by the Department of Justice to purchase two message boards and speed trailers that are gonna help throughout the city. We received a, a donation uh, to purchase a canine for explosive detection. It's the first time in the city's history that we've actually have a bomb dog on staff. And with the Atlanta Braves in town and other uh, events in the day and age that we're living in today, this is a huge benefit for the city of Northport that we're not having to rely on outside resources to have that layer, layer of protection within our own city. We also received another donation from a uh, citizen to purchase an additional canine for narcotics detection. As you know, um, there's, there's been some changes with uh, marijuana and CBD and all that other stuff. All of our dogs were originally trained on uh, marijuana detection. However, this new dog is not. Uh, so it's uh, kind of the new dog of the future that we're, we're working with. Our staff, our internal staff designed, uh, I had, one of my things was to rebrand the police department. Uh, more so than just, you know, recreating a, uh, a new image, a new day, uh, in the city and part of that is our appearance uh, because you guys are so gracious in allowing us to go to the outer carrier vest uh, we designed a patch um, which you can see here that was designed by the men and women of the Northport Police Department it wasn't designed by me wasn't designed by the chief uh, deputy chief but it was designed by the men and women that are wearing the patch whether certified or civilian and that patch we're very proud of um, and uh, it's now implemented on all of our uniforms. We also implemented a new computer-aided dispatch and records management system. This has been a huge um, undertaking. Um, the initial implementation was kind of rough, transforming to a brand new system in the middle of COVID, in the middle of uh, virtual meetings and implementation. So if things could go wrong, it went wrong. However, uh, we've had great staff on both sides uh, that were able to work through all the problems. And right now our, our system is starting to flourish and uh, we're very happy with the, uh, the new product. We partnered uh, with the Sarasota Police Department in adding one of our officers to their bomb team. It's the first time in the city's history that we actually have a member of the Northport Police Department on the bomb squad. We're continuing uh, with our community events. We added pizza with the police, stuff a cruiser, and uh, the list of other um, events that we're very proud of that um, we're gonna continue doing. Obviously, coming out of COVID, we'll, we'll do more. 
Right now we sit at 123 sworn police officers, 42 civilian for 165 total personnel of operation. We took into account city comparisons of city like like minded uh, versus population and stuff. And as you can see, um, where we sit down there uh, with a population change of over 3,000 people. I will say that these uh, stats came from uh, September. Uh, I think it was like uh, June, July. June, yeah. June, July. So, you know, they're not like current day right now. We believe that the Northport Police Department has a relatively low crime rate, but does it? Uh, in an effort to re uh, in an effort to see where reported crime was, uh, we took into account UCR crime for those three years of 2017, 18, and 19. We concentrate on part one crimes, otherwise known as uh, violent crimes, which are, are labeled there. Three year averages of the 12 cities that I showed you in the previous slide um, shows you that we're sitting, you know, pretty healthy amongst the other cities around the state that are comparable to ours. On this uh, average chart, the green is better and the red is the worst. And as you can see, almost going completely across the board, except for one category, we are in the better area. Uh, and one category, which is sex, uh, sex offenses, were in the average area. <clears throat> this is virtually the same thing, just a different visual uh, look of the averages. Ranking of total crime index. Here it shows a three-year average. Uh, we have uh, the lowest crime index comparative to those agencies that um, we're comparing. Yeah. Overall, our uh, crime statistics were down 16, a little over 16% uh, percent overall crime in the city, which we're very proud of. It's kind of cut and dry. I have a phenomenal team. Uh, I, I walked into a phenomenal police department. Um, I'm blessed to have the staff that I have. Um, they make me look good. Um, and I'm very pleased to work for a commission or, or have a commission that is very supportive of law enforcement, especially in today's day and age where it's not necessarily the, uh, the common thread that's, that's going around. So from the bottom of my heart, I know all of you guys have reached out showing your support to, towards law enforcement and to the men and women of the Northport Police Department, and we greatly appreciate that. So any questions? Thank you, Chief, for the presentation. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Chief? I just want to say thank you. I mean, it's community policing at the best, and our department is an example for all the other departments to look at. Thank you, ma'am. And, and try, to, uh, try to achieve. So thank you for everything that you do. Thank you to you and your entire staff for thank keeping you, our city safe and always being there for us. And very grateful. We appreciate that. Thank, thank you. you. All right, seeing nothing else. Thank you again, Chief. See you next year or tomorrow, depending on how quickly it goes for you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so now we're going to discuss the state and federal legislative priorities. Um, city manager. Well, I believe we all read this is your wants and needs meeting. Yeah, um, read the paper today. We should <laughs> discuss their wants and needs. Um, you now we are approaching that time of the year where we need to establish what the commission's uh, state and federal legislative priorities are. Um, you'll see attached to here we have both last year's as well as some suggestions from staff for ideas, and that's what they are. Um, obviously, the commission sets those priorities, but staff gives you some, some ideas to run with. But with that, I'm going to actually turn it over to you all because they're your priorities. Thank you so much. Um, guys, before we start our discussion, can we just go ahead and do public comment now, and that way then we can progress through this? All right, so at this time we'll have public comment. Uh, Mr. Hale? Alan Hale, Northport 
Uh, commissioners, I just wanted to talk about some possibilities that would come up today. Um, uh, they are two of them. Uh, one is running utilities to the Sumter Boulevard uh, exchange with I-75. And the second um, is the uh, punching a road or extending Toledo Blade out through Walton Ranch. Uh, the first, um, <clears throat> I have to uh, tell for people that don't know this, um, that Sumter exit right there goes directly over the city's primary uh, water supply. Several years ago, we had a horrendous wreck, I think you remember it, where a uh, truck uh, turned over and, and the, it was such a hot wreck for all the diesel fuel that it uh, melted the bridge in effect. And uh, a lot of the diesel fuel went into the, because it's just right underneath the bridge there, went into the uh, Mayakahatchee Creek. Elizabeth Wong told me that they had to shut down the water department for several days so we weren't drinking it. Uh, this area is vulnerable. That's, that's an average year. But this, nothing special. We have things happen there all the time. But this area is particularly vulnerable to any kind of adverse a thing that happens on I-75. Um, I'm I have heard, and I don't know if this is an ongoing policy, of running water lines and utilities out to that um, that intersection there. Uh, I would say um, if the only well, I'm not going to say uh, what I think should be there. Uh, just um, be aware that the promise of a um, hospital uh, there uh, has to be a real reality and not just a uh, suggestion uh, that never comes to happen. Then they'll have to put a, uh, a gas station or something. And I hope at that time you remember what I'm saying here about the closeness of uh, petroleum uh, over our where our uh, water supply passes under it. The second thing, if I've got the time, is uh, I've heard this idea of uh, pushing a road, extending Toledo Blade through the Walton Preserve. Uh, commissioners, this will, this will destroy the preserve. Uh, there is not a uh, hurricane evacuation route, although I'm sure it is going to be posed as such. We've, uh, Sierra Club and myself have done a, uh, um, a study of the mileage you don't gain anything. If anything, you, you conduct people out into a two-lane highway out in the country. Does that make sense? You're trying to get out of Dodge. You don't want to be stuck out, out in the middle of nowhere. And the hurricane doesn't care if you're, whether you're huddled in a car out in the country or, or uh, ahead of it going down I-75. This is... Mr. Hale. This area is prone to flooding. Yes, that's Thank it. You. That's it. Your three minutes are up, sir. If you'd like to send us an email, I'm sure we'll all be happy to take a look at it. That way then you can get your points across a little bit more clearly with more time. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. All right, guys. So let's start the conversation about, let's stick with the state legislative priorities and then we'll move into federal. Uh, Vice Mayor. Uh, as we get started with this, I want to take you guys back in time to April 14th. Uh, COVID was coming upon us. We were looking at different ways of gaining revenue in that. And I brought up at that point in time, uh, Joe Gruder's bill that he was wanting to get through in order to have all online um, purchases have the sales tax. Uh, I was tasked to work with the city attorney and I was trying to get that bill and work with Joe three times reaching out and did not get that collaboration. So I'm requesting that we drop that direction of me working with the city attorney to come back with a resolution in regards to Joe's bill. Uh, so that's the first part of it. B, I would like to see it added to the state legislative priorities that we support sales tax being added to online sales. Just make it generic. Uh, I know Commissioner Carazone was concerned of the way that maybe um, Mr. Gruders had it worded, so she wanted to view it. So without it B, 
being there if we just left it general that we supported um, online sales tax. I would be good with that. Is there anything else, Vice Mayor? Well, if we could get a consensus to cease that direction for the city attorney and myself, I would appreciate that. Well, let's get a consensus to uh, absolve city attorney and vice mayor working together for gener Senator Gruder's uh, bill. Um, Commissioner Hanks? Vice mayor? Yes. Obviously. And I'm a yes. Commissioner Carson? Yes. Commissioner um, yes. Emmerich, thank you. And Senator Gruder's bill reminds me that I would like to acknowledge Ms. S uh, Sydney. Uh, Gruders, who's here from Senator Subi's office. So thank you very much for joining us. And I apologize for not recognizing you much earlier than I just did. So thank you again for being here. I didn't recognize her. In the yeah, I, at first I didn't either. <laughs> the mask Absolutely. But going back to this, um, I reached out again just the other day to um, Gruder's office again. And because he's in an election, he can't put a bill in before the election. So it's something that we could look at and maybe support after the fact. But right now, just in the legislative priorities, I think it's good enough that we just add that we support online sales tax. Commissioner Carson. Can we get consensus to add, and I'm going to be specific in the way I say it, uh, add the support of sales tax on web-based sales that are not taxed otherwise? There's a sounds, reason I say it that way. Fine. Yeah. City clerk, did you capture that? Yeah. Thank you very much. So let's get a consensus based on what Commissioner Carasone said about the sales tax on web-based um, sales tax services. on web-based sales that are not taxed otherwise. There's a, like I said, there's a reason why I said it that way. Commissioner Carson. I'm um, yes. Commissioner Emmerich? Yes. Uh, Vice Mayor? Yes. Commissioner Hanks? Yes. Yeah. And that I am also in favor of. So that we will add that to the priorities. I can speak to that. The reason why I said that is that there's a lot of web-based sales that are already taxed on the other end. And so if a person who's purchasing it paid the tax out of Michigan, I don't believe it's fair for them to pay the tax out of Florida. Oh, correct. There should be maybe a shared mutual agreement between those <laughs> states that are collecting taxes to give some to Florida. I'm not sure. But I don't believe you should be paying it twice. Double tax. Yeah. So that's that's the point. City manager. You may want to, um, when you get to your federal priorities, put something along those lines so that, because that would be a federal rule. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and we're all on the Florida League of Cities various committees. The one I'm on has been pushing for exactly what you're asking for for at least the last three years. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be a priority again this year. I think last year they actually made it number one. Um, but it's been up there on their priority. It makes sense that it is because it's revenue, you know, to be generated it's and hundreds of millions. Exactly. And, and in the economy that we have right now in the country, that's something that they need to look at. Thank you. Um, Mr. Carson, you, you still have your light on. Did you want to speak to anything else? I guess I'd like to just kind of go through some of the things that were discussed at uh, Florida League, or actually it was Minnesota League. Um, well, I could talk about the FLC stuff too. Um, one of the things is keeping home rule at the top priority. And if you look at what staff's proposition was, the support legislation to maintain the integrity of communities with home rule and advocate lessening unfunded mandates, I would say advocate um, removing unfunded mandates or something a little bit more, a little stronger. Um, Or just with home rule and end it at there. I'm not sure 
what you'd like to do, but home rule is definitely going to be uh, FLC top priority. And um, of course they're, they're still in the whole rental thing, short term rental issue. So, but I don't know it. Do you, Mayor, do you want to just go down these and, and kind of make the determination so that we can speed this up? We could do that. I just wanted to see if anybody had anything initially that they wanted to speak about for state priorities. Um, I will say it again. Uh, I think I say it every single year. This list is too long. Mm -hmm. This list is too complicated. Great. This list will not capture anybody's interest to read. This list is supposed to be short, quick, to the point because they get like five seconds to look at it. And nobody is even gonna read that first paragraph, which in my opinion is the most important paragraph and that's about home rule. Just looking at it does not say, hey, read me. It says, Bleh. And we have got to make sure that our priorities are just that, priorities. These are the things that we find as a city to be the most important. Quick, to the point, say it, be done with it. Not paragraphs, not 50 million words. Nobody's gonna read it. And the whole purpose of creating these priorities is to get our legislators to read it. Off my soapbox. I could not agree more, <laughs> Mayor. I I'm saying that for years as well. I don't see why we can't just let, limit it to home rule uh, powers. I'd even go as far as saying reinstating home rule powers because it's as if we do not have any. They're, they're stripping it like crazy. Yep. I would say the second is high speed internet access for all. Yep. And I would say the third is infrastructure expansion for public safety and welfare. Say that again. Infrastructure expansion. Hold on, let me think about that. Improvements and expansion. Yes. For public safety and wellness. Just public safety, that's all you need to say. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, I mean, I think that pretty much collects everything, those three things. Well, the, the one thing that I do um, think we need to have as a priority is the um, hospital special districts because we're, we're still trying to get a hospital here and with the special districts that everybody has to pay into that goes to SMH is making it difficult for a provider to come here. Um, I, I think mental health might need to be on here. I, I don't know. I think with COVID, who knows, what the, who knows how it's gonna be with this next legislative session. Um, so, I think maybe the mental health part we could go through with the federal side. Um, since I agree. most of that's been supported by the um, the grant. So, so maybe um, just add a fourth bullet point to honestly, I would put that that removing. Tax supported hospital districts. And I think maybe city manager and city attorney and staff can come up with the wordsmithing for this hospital taxing district. Um, I th I th um, we've talked about this ad nauseum about this taxing right, district. But what I'm trying to say is that should go underneath high speed internet. It should be yeah. reinstate home rule, high speed internet for all, removing the the hospital district, the taxing authority of the hospital district, and then infrastructure, because we're always working on infrastructure, so. If you all want, I mean, uh, this looks the way it does, because that's what we wanted it to look like right. in the past years. I get there's difference of opinions amongst you all, as, as there always has been, of what this should look like. Um, 
if you want to come up with what your top however many, I'll leave it up to you all, we can create something that brings back to you something that might look better than this. Because um, keep in mind, this is designed to be a starting point for a conversation when you all go to Tallahassee and Washington. Exactly. And you can expand on bullet points once you're there. Exactly. And, you know, I agree with you that, you know, if somebody handed this to me, I probably wouldn't spend a tremendous amount of time mm -hmm. reading it in detail. But if it had key words on there, I'm more likely to remember what you told me about it than I am to just pick this up and say, all right, what's Northport's top 15 things? about how many you have on here. We can, we can work on the, the look and how this is done. We just need to know what your priorities are and bring you back something, and you can tweak it then, if that would work better for you all. I actually like the brochure. I like the information mm -hmm. on this side. <coughs> uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then the bullet points on here, but I'm in agreement, full agreement with the, the order that Commissioner Carazone has stated. And, lessening it to those and we can expand on whatever comes forward when we see them okay well like I say, if you just give us our priorities i agree i think the other side is very important um and i that wasn't my intent to remove the other side we're focusing on right, right. priorities today and tell us what they are and and we'll come up with something for you i mean that's we have professional staff that can do that once we know what you want to so there's your can four I, can i ask a question before we close this out um Usually in November, we go up to um, Sarasota County and they have a meeting with all of the local legislative um, elected officials at the state level. Do you know when that meeting is going to take place? I would assume it's after the election, but. <laughs> I think that's a safe assumption, but it's exact, it is exactly that at this point. An assumption. I don't have a, a date for that. Um, I'll reach out to the county. They may not and even do see it. if they've even scheduled or plan to schedule it with everything going yeah. on. And the other thing is, is if that meeting is either not going to happen or happens. Um, obviously, we have an election coming up too. For us to finalize this would seem premature because we're going to have new sitting commissioners that may have other ideas and priorities and maybe coming back and having another conversation after the election. Um, having these priorities in case we need them for the next 30 to 60 days, but then after the election have another conversation with the newly elected um, city commissioners to continue the conversation to make sure that some of their priorities are not overlooked. I'm not, not disagreeing with you at all. I, like I said, if, if you can give us what your priorities are now, we're gonna bring something back to you anyway to make sure it looks the way that you all want it to look. Mm -hmm. um, if the vision I have in my head is it'll be more bullets than sentences and paragraphs exactly. than what you have right now is what I'm hearing from you all. Well, that shouldn't take us too long to bring you a rough draft of what it would look like. Obviously, we're not gonna to go to printers and everything. And, and you're right, if the county decides, and it's not even really the county, I know they facilitate it, but it's this, mm -hmm. the state and federal elected officials that will be there. Um, if, um, if that happens, you'll at least have something to go with. And obviously when you get a new commission, we can bring it back if that's the will of the commission at the time is to, to redo it. Okay, can, can we go over those again? Commissioner Carazone, you yes. had home rule to okay, start with. Okay, so number one would be home rule. Reinstate home rule. Reinstate home rule. Number two would be to um, help fund high-speed internet access for all. Number three would be removing possible districts that are supported by taxes, however that's written. Number four would be infrastructure, uh, improvements and expansion for public safety. Number five would be the sales tax on web, you know, supporting sales tax on web-based sales. Thank you, I wanted to make sure that consensus was mm -hmm. included. And then, um, however that comes back. The can can one, we get, can we see, yeah, uh, I, I, I want to see if we, we can add one more. Because last year at this time, we had a huge discussion about municipal 911 services. And I remember the police department spoke about that. And I don't ever remember anything happening with 
that shared money with the county for the municipal 911 services. And it was, it was a huge discussion. We added it to our priorities and then it like stopped. And I don't know why did it stop? Where are we in getting some of that revenue from the county for the 911 services? I think we need to find that out. First. Yeah. Because I, if I remember, it was something in the state statute. That so I, I don't know, but we definitely need to find out whatever happened with that. So. Here, I don't see my file on, on that offhand, but I don't think anything happened with that. My recollection is that the statute does not entitle right. the city to any money. That's correct. Was. And so part of what we were discussing was that the cities would probably like that changed in the statute. And so one of the reasons I would like to see our 911 services be single and we handle it ourselves instead mm -hmm. of being dependent is then we can get funding. Well, not necessarily can you still get funding then. The, the funding is determined at the state level and it goes to, it's a chief knows, I'll let you speak to the terminology, but it goes to the county. Um, we're not entitled to any of it, despite the fact that we do pay into it because the state says where it goes. Uh, if you want money to come here, we have two options. We can ask the county to give us some and they can say yes or no. Or we can attempt to get legislative change at the state level to where we can be recognized as, I think it's a peace act or something like that. That's that. what I was talking about. Yeah, and, and that requires state legislative change is whether we create our own 911 doesn't entitle us to anything. I just want to make sure that that was clear that creating a 911 doesn't guarantee you'll get a dime. All right. Correct. Well, thank you for that update. <laughs> okay. Because it so was very I would say important. Add that as number six. I would. Uh, to request changes to the municipal or to the 911 shared. Uh, what is it called? I don't think it is. I'll be what honest. Is it called? I think it's PSAP. Um, and if you ask me what it stands for, I'm going to call the chief down here. To right? the primary public safety, safety answering point. Public safety answering point. Thank you. Does that make sense? <laughs> public safety answering point. Answering. Those, those are determined at the state level, not. Okay, so to request changes to the public safety answering point legislation. legislation to make or and quick to the point. I know. Uh, yeah, that's easy we'll, to we'll say when you got PSAP you. instead, you know. Yeah, you but want. anyways, the point is to have an equitable fair share yeah. for municipalities. So now what I what I would say is for those of you who are going to be on this board for next year, this is a perfect example of something to take to your FLC as a priority and have them put it on their agenda. It's how we got the so you know the DCF stuff done without it being on our priority card. We still took it to the FLC and allowed them to hear what we wanted to hear. So I would suggest highly that um, when you guys do your annual board, it's going to have to be at the end of next year, and then whoever your, your contacts are, you'll have to ask them to get it on the agenda for the, the next meeting. So, But you I probably won't be able to be heard till next year. I would year. love to see Northport be one of those answering points. Yeah. Love to. All right, so we have these six. Is there any other discussion? Any other comments? Let's get a motion for our first round of legislative priorities. For the state. For state. And just one quick question. Does anybody else use these state legislative priorities, the city manager with staff or anybody, other than us going up to Tallahassee in February slash March? Or is this basically it? I mean, who else sees this? For the most part, um, you all take them to wherever you go. Um, we'll distribute them. You know, we post them on our site. But you know, anybody that wants to see them that way, we don't really take them a lot of other places. It's 
mainly for okay. you all to do. So it's not. I was going to say, yeah. That, that's kind of going to get is, you know, the chamber, we'll, we send them to them. Okay. They may take them because they're usually up there, I think, a, one week, one way or the other. Oh, yeah, they're there a few times, yeah. Um, we send them, obviously, to the county so that when, because they go, I think, the week after. They're, they're within a week of us also. So I just want to expand on that. So let's say if we're applying for a grant, if it's not on our state legislative priorities, does that diminish our ability to get grants? I wouldn't say it diminishes, but it certainly helps if it's on there. Um, the biggest thing that helps with grants is if we have money in the pot okay. to back something. Or if it's even in strategic planning. Correct. Okay, thank you. All right, so let's see no other discussion. Let's go ahead and get a uh, motion to to do these six listed priorities for the state. Uh, so go ahead. Move to, do you want me to list them out again? Or I think we already and know it. Good with it? Okay. And then move to have the uh, six discuss priorities as uh, detected by priority uh, to be gathered together by staff and put on the back of the card. A second. So coming back after the election. Well, I don't care if it comes back after the election. I think that's too late. I think it needs to be back as soon as possible because they're meeting. If you're looking for what we talked about, the first round of this, right. you don't want it long before the election. Um, we're going to try and yeah. get this to you by the end of October. Exactly. Um, you want it to then, you, the mayor, I believe you brought up readdressing it after the election. Correct. But, I'll do that. Um, I think both need to happen. Okay. Um, you need to have something prepared because if the meeting with the legislators happens, anywhere in the first half of November, mm -hmm. you're going to want this done. Yeah, and I agree with and, that. And that's what I also said earlier. The new commission can change these, as any commission can change what a previous one did. That's up to them. Um, I'm not going to tell them what they can and can't do at this point. They're not even here. The, the only reason that I see waiting until election is you then have a new mayor and vice mayor to, to go on the front. I mean, we goofed it up at some point last year, year before, and had to run these twice. To <coughs> my plan is not to have them professionally done until they're needed. <laughs> my plan is to have you something that you can have in November, and then when we're ready to, to go somewhere and need professional ones, that will be after the election. You'll have a new mayor. You'll have new commissioners. Um, we can create something in-house that you can take to the county. Gotcha. Oh, absolutely. Um, okay. We'll do the professional ones for Tallahassee when you're ready to go there. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right, so we have a motion as stated by uh, Commissioner Carousel. Do I hear a second on that? Second. And that was seconded by Commissioner, uh, Vice Mayor Luke. You would think after 11 months I would get that right, and I am so sorry. Um, we'll go ahead and take the vote. And that passed five to zero. And that's for the state priorities. Now let's move on to the federal ones. See, these are quick and to the point, but they. And I think the federal looks at it even less than the state people do. <laughs> so, um, I'd like to see that internet part be the first one. I mean, on this, it's the last one. I would make it because Frontier got a federal grant. You know, that's where it came from. So I would like to see that be number one. And I, I still think we need to support the faster FEMA recovery. God, yes. And and I, I don't know if FEMA is handling COVID recovery or if that's a different entity. They are, yeah. There, there will be a FEMA aspect to it, but there's also the, the CARES Act is, exactly. is being run through the county. Um, so I, I think that we need to make sure it's not just FEMA, but whoever else is handling the COVID recovery and COVID funding to the cities might need to be incorporated in that second, well, now going to be the second bullet point. Um, I honestly don't see a problem with any of the current priorities, maybe shortening them, as we had discussed earlier. Mm -hmm. um, but I would add 
uh, as was discussed prior, to support a shared sales tax between states. However, that needs to be worded as since city managers on the FLC, he'd know how that's worded. Um, and that um, the, the mental health aspect uh, being more used by the block grant or I'm not sure how you even address that, honestly. I think if the um, that one bullet point that says City of Northport su supports assisting our local veterans and citizens, mental health, yeah. health care, mm -hmm. affordable yeah. housing, suicide. I think that that in itself is it's a good mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe it's just a matter of moving the bullet points then. Yeah. The, the internet access number one. I personally would like to see the support of assisting our local veterans and citizens as number two. I think I'm good with that. I think the FEMA one should then be number three. And we could probably get rid of the medical marijuana since it seems to be taking care of itself. No, it's not. They need to change the classification so that it can be taken off the schedule now. Yeah. Taken off the schedule and people aren't fired over it. And there's a whole lot more that needs to be done to that. But, um, and criminal reform absolutely has to take place at some point. Could they be combined? No, because one is a classification of a drug. Right. The other one is really it's criminal. Pretty, that classification I mean, but the, makes it criminal. Listen, the criminal reform could go at the end because I got news mm -hmm. for you. That's going to take about 150 years. I was so, say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. centuries. Yeah. Can we have number four be the infrastructure one? Mm hmm. And then five be the medical marijuana and the criminal reform? I'd like the sales tax yeah, well, to be in oh, there. I think we made that number two. Number two. Yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot to put that on the sheet. So. Well, number two, we put uh, the veterans and the individuals. So that will be number three. So number three yeah. will be shared sales tax. Well, what was number one? Was the internet, internet access? Okay, so internet sales tax, then uh, support for veterans and citizens. And then uh, FEMA reimbursement, et cetera, including the COVID stuff. Um, and then the infrastructure, medical marijuana, and then the criminal reform. Seven. So we added one. Yeah, we but added I think the you can reword FEM the, the very, you know, about the FEMA a little bit better so it's shorter and sweeter. All right, does anybody else have any other comments or questions or anything to add to this? Wow, it's awfully quiet, guys. Okay, so let's get a motion on those seven items as listed in City Clerk. Did you get those seven lists in the right order? The first okay. is City supports internet access to all. Sales tax. Uh, second is the shared sales tax between states. Third is the veterans and uh, citizens support of mental health health care, so on and so forth. Um, that was that was third. Uh, fourth is the FEMA. Flash code. Get your foot out of your butt. Uh, five is uh, the infrastructure. Six is the medical marijuana reclassification. Seven is the <coughs> criminal reform. You have it now? Yes. Okay, thank and you. And I will move to have those in that priority. Second. 
A motion on the floor to approve the seven items as stated for the federal legislative priorities. Uh, that was made by Commissioner Carasone, seconded by Vice Mayor. Anything to that, guys? Just Mayor. that it's assumed that it will come back as well with the state. That's all. I'm sorry. Sorry. And that passed five to zero. All right, so let's go ahead and do any um, the public comment. I'll do it again after the proclamations, but do we have any public comment, Vice Mayor? Um, City Clerk, do we have any online final? Thank you. Uh, let's go ahead and do commission communications. Commissioner Hanks, Vice Mayor. Uh, I attended the virtual women in business uh, it was phenomenal. I mean, the technology that they had, the, it was just a great, um, great thing. Kudos to our economic development team, the chamber. Uh, everybody just did a tremendous job on getting that done. Uh, I learned something yesterday, in fact, uh, about animal control services. Uh, I had uh, somebody reach out. They had reached out to the Animal Control Services to capture a raccoon that was in an HOA. And the animal control people told them that uh, they don't do that. Uh, and what, it, what I found out yesterday was that they changed how they do it in January, and they only capture domestic, domesticated animals, no wild animals. Um, I found that very interesting because to me that was a, a drop in services to our city uh, and we weren't made aware that our citizens weren't getting the same level of service that they were for the money that they were paid. <laughs> same way I feel about the park system, you know, and their millage rate went up this year. So just wanted to make the group aware. I don't know. I probably would have brought this up at the time of budget and um, Jason, Kim, everybody did such a great job with, with everything, but I don't know what the background is on our old animal control person. I keep hearing that that individual captured the wild animals too. He would, he would trap and Currently, anybody within our city, if they have a wild animal, they have to hire a trapper. There's nobody that comes and gets the wild animal to release the wild animal. You have to get a professional, so. Live action. Exactly. Well, you have to be licensed but with uh, fish and wildlife in order to trap certain animals. And I think back in the day, that was kind of what the crux of the issue was, is that we would have to have our animal control officer have all those licenses for different wild animals. Um, and we were already paying Sarasota County Sheriff's Department who, well, Sarasota County, I should say, for animal control. So in an effort to reduce the cost um, and the training costs, because yes, the previous trapped them, not with a license, with a license, but um, he, you know, did what he did. And <laughs> um, so the, the previous gentleman in the city was not licensed to do wild animals. He didn't hold any licenses through okay. from if I, I mean, that was what the presentation was. Yeah, nothing against the gentleman that did it. Oh, no, he was awesome. Job. Everybody loved him. Yeah. Um, but we discovered when this issue started being looked into of whether or not we should be doing animal control or the county should do it as they're required by statute, um, that was one of the issues that was discovered is in order to maintain doing it would have cost us a significant amount of money because we were in violation of a lot of laws. Um, on various levels. It's just probably the easiest way to leave that. What, what, um, I mean, we went with the county then because the county was doing it, taking care of it. As you stated, it is legislated that they do so. So how did we get to the point where they're only doing domestic animals and somebody has to hire a trapper for the wild? 
which is an extra cost on top of what they're already paying to the county. I don't know about, we I thought did not get there at all. Um, Sorry? So we did not get there at all because we would include us and this is a decision made at, at the, the level of the people right. that do the work. Um, you found out apparently the same time I did. Yes. We were both on the same email. Yesterday. Um, I, I honestly just cannot answer that question because I don't know why in January they changed that. Um, you did confirm they changed it though, right? Yes, it was. The sent the email to us. So I would imagine they're not lying in their email. Um, so I, I take them for their word that yes, in January, according to this email, they changed what they're doing. Um, we weren't notified of those changes? No. Hmm. That's, that, that's why I wanted to bring it up. I hadn't heard. Is this only South County? That's another question. Is it just our area that they changed this criteria, or is it countywide? No, it's a countywide. Yeah. Um, it was done at the county level. Um, the chief may have more information. He's <clears throat> really on his way down. Coming. But yeah. uh, so was it the sheriff's department? It was my understanding the sheriff's department took over animal control for the city of Northport. Yes, and a couple of the animal control officers actually, one was in my neighborhood, but I think at least two of them live in Northport. Mm -hmm. And they are only, I'm not privy to the email y'all are talking to. I didn't, I didn't receive it. So they're only now doing domestic animals. But what happens if there's like a gator in somebody's pool? They don't call animal control. They have to call their First, own. First, we don't school. recommend you get in that pool. Well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> second of all, I mean, two things before I'll let the chief answer more of that in just a second. I also want, I just sent the email to all of you so you all have it going forward. But. They do give recommendations of trappers yes, that are available, but you have to call a trapper and pay the trapper to to get the gator out of the pool. <laughs> or you just have one of Julie's folks go out who's very good at catching them. They do that. That's <laughs> crazy. Go ahead, Chief. A whole lot of people just this is countywide. However, this is not uncommon in all municipalities around the state because of all the special licensing and and rules, whether it's federally protected or state protected, that you're seeing your animal control districts throughout the state are only typically handling domestic related animals. All the other jobs are being handled by professional licensed trappers. So this is not uncommon or unique to Sarasota County, uh, but it is it is common across the state that this is how everybody's doing business. I would imagine it is, but it was just a surprise that this was put in place in January and we're now in October and just finding out. Yeah. And uh, and the citizens were, you know, what do you mean, you know, they they can't help and we have to find somebody our own or trap it ourselves or you know, so mm -hmm. yeah. this is why Wild Man has his own show. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that on operational side on the police department, we have a very good relationship with animal control yes. and the sheriff's office. And I can tell you that they provide a premium service to Northport and a lot of their resources primarily stay down here in South County. So as you, as you know, you see their vehicles parked a lot around this area and their response time to our, our calls for service are very minimal. And uh, as the police chief, we have no issues with animal control and the service that they're providing, you know, when we get called out to the calls. I, I don't either. They have come to my house um, for feral cats. Uh, and I was very impressed with how they handled everything. It was very respectful to the animal. Um, they didn't destroy them. They, there was cat colonies that they went to. Uh, so very impressed. And you see them down here all the time and they respond. I was just shocked that they no longer did wild raccoons. <laughs> so do we still offer traps to our citizens like we've yes. done in the past? The police department still has traps that are available to the but citizens. If, okay, so if I come and pick up a trap for raccoons in around my house, where do then I, I take them if animal control isn't doing it? Well, if you trap something in a trap, I would highly suggest don't bring that trap anywhere. That right, it, all, it, and they'll come out to that location and retrieve. Well, I did hear the lobby of the police department's open now. 
That was reopened, yes. Yeah. No, I, I'm, well, I, I believe the letter said that if you trapped it, they would come get it. That is correct. Within 24 hour right. period. Who's it's they? The animal control. Animal control. But you so they'll come and get it. a trapped raccoon, but they, they won't. They won't trap it. There, won't there's, certain, trap. there's certain regulations and laws that have to be complied by, and you can't keep anything trapped over a longer 24 hours. So they're going to help aid uh, the relocation of that. They will provide a trap. Right. Relocation so, as so the county will provide traps. Yeah, yeah, we, ha we have traps at the police department. For I would like to maybe see some educational information go out mm -hmm. on Facebook to let the citizens know that there has been a change so they're not shocked and calling everybody, you know, that, you know, oh my goodness, because this, this particular incident was here in Creek. And that's an HOA. And so it probably rests upon the HOA in order to get these wild critters out of the HOA instead of the citizen, you know, the cost being on the citizen. So it, a lot comes into play. So I think an education piece uh, worded nicely. Vice Mayor, I'll be honest with you, the calls for service for wildlife type incidents are, are practically nil. They have so, to be if it's been yeah, nine months. You know, it's, just it's not it. saying that it doesn't, doesn't happen. Uh, but they are very few and far between. We deal a lot with, you know, the dogs and stuff like that. Right. We do deal a lot with gators, you know? Yeah. Okay. I know back in the day when I went to the police camp and they taught you how to get on the back of the gator and put, yeah. You know, I'd rather well, go towards gunfire than wrestle with a gator. <laughs> it, was, it, was, <laughs> it was Northport police who came out and got the gator at the, yeah. at the company that I ran in Northport. Of course, he was only about that big. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, Chief. Anything else, Vice Mayor? No, that was all. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Carrison. Nothing. Commissioner Emmerich. No, ma'am. The only thing I want to do is just uh, give the props and kudos to our economic development uh, team for a, a job well done for the women in business. And I know they didn't do it alone, but they they... What a great group of people that put that on. It was an amazing event. Even though it was virtual, it still was really a, a good, good information. So thank you to them. And um, you want a consensus about education on animal control? I think he's got that. We'll work with, I mean, we're going to obviously have to work with the county and we we'll put information out about their services without right. their input. But I'll have uh, our PIO get with the county and get that message out. Thank you. Um, so there's the score. The score, oh, yeah, score the chamber part um, of uh, the planning in that. Yep, they did a great job. And you did wonderful. Oh, <laughs> um, moving on to administrative reports, city manager. I'm good, thank you. Uh, city attorney, I have nothing, ma'am. City clerk, yeah. all right. So at this time, it is 2 09, we are adjourned. Well, we're in recess until 4 p.m. community with the elite law enforcement services out there with the highest priority being the protection of life and property. We work 24-7, holidays, uh, there's no time off. Uh, our agency is rapidly growing. We have a, um, a detective bureau, we have a traffic unit, uh, we have a full crime scene unit. Northport PD is an accredited agency. Actually, we're double Excelsior accredited, which is we are one of 14, I believe, other agencies in the state of Florida that have reached that double Excelsior accredited. It's a very prestigious uh, accomplishment to have.
most of the people only see uh, the police officers in uniforms out there doing the day-to-day -day tasks, but they can't do that alone. In the background, what people don't see a lot is the support staff here at Norport Police Department. We go from very high density areas to very rural areas uh, throughout the city. The challenge that Northport Police Department is facing right now is the rapid growth in the city of Northport um, and trying to keep up with those levels of service. Law enforcement officers wear many different hats, um, but at the end of the day, it's their, their problem solvers. Um, they're there for you 24-7, uh, and the, their, their importance of all of our officers that we stress to is to go home safe at night. The Administration Division of Public Works does a variety of different tasks. Uh, the main one is our Customer Service Division. They answer several hundred phone calls a day, ranging from solid waste questions to uh, water drainage questions on a day like today. Also, we have a uh, Budget Finance Administration Division that handles accounts payable, uh, accounts receivable, and budget. The Northport Public Works Department also has a technical section that handles GIS, mapping, and um, also our work order system. In the engineering division, we analyze any drainage issues that the city might have, water control structures. We're also in charge of all the roadways. The roadways include design for multi-use trails, sidewalks, the city has been experiencing tremendous growth. The biggest project that we have right now is called the Price Boulevard Whitening. That road is a two-lane road. Capacity for that two-lane road is about 17,000 vehicles per day. Uh, our latest numbers for that show that currently there are 21,700 vehicles traveling every day, meaning it's way over capacity. Engineering also is in charge of uh, revising new development. When uh, a new gas station comes, uh, a new hotel or building, they submit plans to us. So it's our responsibility to check that they comply with water treatment. The drainage that they got to design the pond and the piping and everything is per code and standards. I have one professional engineer that takes care of all the uh, roadway design. Then I have a stormwater manager and then we have a group of inspectors they inspect uh, when there's a new house being built they got to inspect the, the driveway the culvert pipe and making sure that it's set up at the right elevation to provide positive flow they also inspect the roadways on the through the row bond they inspect uh, to see that the correct thickness of pavement is being applied also the water control structure when it gets into construction we have our own inspector that go and make sure that the project is being built per the plans and specifications Fleet Division, we have uh, over 600 vehicles and equipment that we maintain. I've got seven mechanics, shop supervisor, two staff assistants, and a fleet asset technician that um, we do everything from cradle to grave for all of our vehicles and uh, equipment. So we order the equipment, maintain the equipment, and ultimately dispose of the equipment. We do everything from weed eaters to all the way to airboats to solid waste vehicles, grapple trucks, uh, solid waste trucks, fire, fire engines, ambulances, police cars the entire fleet of the city. Well, we're able to maintain all of our own vehicles. That's the biggest thing. So all of our mechanics have a relationship, if you will, with these vehicles. They know the, in, the nuances of all the vehicles. Uh, it makes it easy for our departments to come and see us. We, we, you know, we're an on-site facility for them, so they don't, they don't necessarily have to schedule safety-related issues. They can come directly to us. 
Um, the city fleet maintenance also carries 44,000 gallons of fuel that we maintain our vehicles with as well. Got over 200 years of mechanics experience among them. So we've got gentlemen who have been here for over 30 years and we've got guys who have been here for just over a year. Public Works Operations Department currently has 71 employees. Of that 71 employees were divided into two sections, which is roadway and drainage. Our roadway section takes care of the over 800 miles of roadway. Of striping, pothole repairs, all of that is handled by the road section. In the roadway section, we, we maintain all of the street signs, uh, install, replace, we maintain all of the traffic signals. We have 19 traffic signals that we maintain in the city, as well as mowing all the right-of-ways, the vertical mowing to push back the uh, impinging vegetation out of the right-of-ways. In that division, we also have the waterway crew that handles all of our aquatic spraying. We have two crews that go out in airboats that spray those waterways to keep the vegetation down. We also have crews that operate all our water control structures. We have 23 gated water control structures that facilitate the movement of the stormwater through the city during storm events uh, and even just our typical rainy season. Then we have our drainage section. It maintains all of our roadside swales, our retention ditches, and all of our pipe installs, our catch basin installs, uh, anything that, that has to do with getting the water from the properties or the roadways into the secondary drainage, which is our retention ditches, and into our canals. Our mission is to ensure the safety and health of our citizens through the proper and efficient collection and disposal of all solid waste. We collect uh, over 30,000 residents here in the city. Garbage, garbage bulk, yard waste, uh, yard waste bulk, uh, recycling, also metal. This year we're probably going to do about 600 tons more of recyclable material over the last year. So that's pretty awesome. I'll tell you a little story. Uh, myself, I've been here 18 years and when I first started here at the Solid Waste Division there was only about 15 people. And right now we have grown, as the city grows, so have we. Uh, we're up to 39 people and employees. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. We also collect from our commercial accounts. We collect dumpsters and roll offs and from businesses and organizations and it's starting to really pick up also. Uh, we have about three, over 350 accounts right now and some of those accounts go maybe three, four, five times a week. Uh, we get 3,300 service requests a month for bulk of garbage and collection. We have some good, good people that work here, so really care about the community. Remember, if you have any questions at, at any time, you can always just give us a call at 941-240-8050. Give us a call, customer service. They're glad we help you with any questions. Many times, Crisis can't be avoided. A family's car will accidentally break down while their electric bill is due. A health emergency will arise just as it's time to pay the rent. It's a reality that so many people face. What makes the City of Northport unique is that it offers a way to help. The City of Northport Social Services Division connects the public with valuable resources to improve their overall quality of life, especially in unexpected times of hardship. As part of the city manager's office, the Social Services Division's mission is to ensure the availability, awareness, and accessibility of programs and resources in the community, and to assist families and individuals while improving their overall quality of life. With five staff members, including a manager, two full-time caseworkers, a staff assistant one, and a staff assistant two, the Social Services Division assists Northport households experiencing a short-term, unavoidable crisis with financial assistance. Staff can assist with rent or mortgage, utilities, and more. In addition, staff will connect families and individuals with available community resources. The Social Services Division also oversees the City of Northport's Family Service Center and the Community Education Center located on Pan American Boulevard. Both the Family Service Center and the Community Education Center house a variety of nonprofit and government agencies that provide aid to residents. 
Located on a campus that includes the Sarasota County Health Department and Children's First, this one-stop location offers a variety of resources that residents would otherwise have to travel outside the city to access. The offices of the Social Services Division are busy. Every Monday morning, Northport residents visit the Social Services Division for what is known as pre-screen Mondays. Clients can meet with a caseworker who gathers basic information about their current situation. From there, referrals and appointments are made to further assist the Northport household. In addition to assisting with rent, mortgage, or utilities, the Social Services Division also is an intake location for families and individuals experiencing homelessness. The Division is a one-by-one -one coordinated intake access point. This is a system that has been created to identify eligible resources and connect clients with the appropriate assistance regarding their situation. Outside of their daily operations, the Social Services Division hosts events in the community designed to further connect the public with area resources. Every April, the Division works with the Healthy Start of Sarasota County to host a community baby shower and preschool expo. This event features businesses and community agencies that offer information and services for parents of both toddlers and newborns. The division also hosts a back-to-school resource fair every August to provide school-aged children supplemental school supplies and backpacks. The fair features exhibitors that provide services for parents with school-aged children. During the holidays, Social Services hosts an annual Home for the Holidays program. This program has two parts, a senior giving tree and adopt and shop. In both cases, seniors and parents register with social services and are adopted by individuals, businesses, and organizations who help provide a holiday experience. Many city departments will adopt families or seniors through this program. Ask your supervisor how you can get involved. There are many other ways that you can help through the Social Services Division. City employees are invited to volunteer time or donate resources. Donations can come in the form of gift cards to gas stations or grocery stores. Monetary donations are also accepted. The Social Services Division and Northport Utilities work together to offer an H2O program in which monetary donations are used to assist Northport households to pay their Northport Utilities bills. Social Services also works with Parks and Recreation to facilitate a youth scholarship program so that our local youth can participate in programs offered by the Parks and Recreation Department. The Social Services Division makes a difference in the lives of Northport residents every day through the services that they provide. If you or someone you know are in a short-term crisis and need assistance, contact the Social Services Division. They are here to help. The Utilities Department is in charge of all water and wastewater services for the City of Northport. We currently serve 17,000 sewer customers and 22,000 water customers throughout the city. The Utilities is comprised of five different divisions. We have our Administration Division, Engineering, Field Operations, our Water Treatment Plant, and our Wastewater Plant. Our administration division has two locations. One is the admin office and field office over on West Price Boulevard next to the high school. Or the other office is our cashiering and customer care office and that is located on the first floor of City Hall. Our engineering division, they oversee all of the utilities projects, uh, new development going in, infrastructure inspections, everything that the city has in the ground has to be located for new construction. Also in the field office on Price Boulevard is our field operations division. They are in charge of maintaining everything out in the distribution and the collection system. They're the ones that do all the new service installations. Anytime there is a break or a repair, they're the ones that respond to that. And we have field operations staff um, available and on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our meter readers are part of our field operations division and those meter readers read every single one of our 22,000 water meters every single month. Our wastewater treatment plant is located on Pan American Boulevard and that plant basically treats all wastewater sewer water throughout the city. And what we do there is we take all that incoming sewage and we treat it to 
uh, produce reclaimed water. The reclaimed water is pumped out to several parks, city facilities, commercial customers, uh, golf courses, and used for irrigation. So that way potable water is not used for those purposes. Our Mayakachi Creek Water Treatment Plant is located on Northport Boulevard next to Skate Park. And that facility is a conventional B-class surface water plant that also has a reverse osmosis treatment plant on the same site. Utilities is largely on the front lines when, when anything's happening within the city. If it's an emergency situation, it's generally utilities that are right in the thick of things, right behind fire. We provide a lot of support to fire. And in instances like Hurricane Irma, as soon as the roads were clear, utilities was right in the thick of things, making sure that we had sanitary sewer and water to be provided to our citizens in their time of need. My name is Dominic Caravella. I'm actually the chief mechanic for the city of Northport for uh, fleet. Well, we do every vehicle that the city owns. We do the entire city. So that includes your PD, fire, um, sanitation, public works, your building department, landscaping, because we do, you know, lawnmowers as small as that all the way on up. Anything the city owns that has a motor on it, we do it here. I oversee the work out here in the shop. I just make sure it's flowing. If somebody has a, a problem, or if they're running into something they're not familiar with, uh, then the two of us would get together and try and figure it out and do the best we can and, and get it up and going. I started out when I was young, went to a trade school, graduated from there, and started off um, doing oil changes and things. Well, I was always interested in transmissions and I became a transmission mechanic for many years. I came down here, I used to vacation down here. My mother-in-law lived here, my in-laws. And uh, when we used to come down on vacation for two weeks, I sort of liked the area. I've got three kids. My daughter is a high school teacher at the high school here in Northport. My son's a, an officer for, for Northport. My wife works for Northport, and I work for Northport. <laughs> and my youngest daughter is uh, in nursing program. She's doing nursing. I got two pieces of fire equipment in here. Now, if we don't repair them or this or that, the fire department's without that equipment so they can't service the general public. We have to get that thing running, get it fixed best we can, get it back to them, and then they put it in service for the public. It's incredibly important. I mean, all right, we'll take, for instance, that rescue, all right? We're gonna fix that rescue, we're gonna do what we can, right? You call, that rescue comes to your house, boom, somebody's having a heart attack. They throw them in that rescue, they take it. It better make it from point A to point B, so I have to make sure that everything is running as best as it possibly can. That's, that's the matter of life and death. Same thing with a, you know, an officer of the law. If that guy is running, he has to be able to hop in that car. He relies on that thing to start, drive, and perform like he wants it to. My job to keep it working that way so he can do his job. I can't speak for everybody in here. For me, it's the reward of knowing that that vehicle is repaired, it's back out there in the field, it's doing its job, that man's doing his job, so I feel like I did my job. It's just the gratification of doing the repair. I love my job. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really, I can't see myself doing our hydraulic machine. Let me get the operator to get his lunch bucket out of there. I need you to get your lunch bucket. I gotta lift the cab, I gotta get in the back if you can. We got his, one of his main feed hydraulic hoses. What happened to it? Uh, it blew out. It actually had a hole in it and it was leaking. We're gonna make one right now. I'll show you how we do that. Where it goes through the clamps, a lot of times it'll rub, and it rubbed through, so we get we get uh, leak from it. So we're just going to replace the whole thing, and we make them here. Uh, we have all the dies, so I just got to get the fittings from the parts department, and we're just going to make it. 
we generate work orders and then they issue all the parts for the vehicle to be repaired and it basically goes on this work order. Um, I'm going to need some hydraulic fittings. Some, um, I'm making a hydraulic hose. Okay, how many do you need? Uh, two. You um, want to get those first and then we'll, or you want me to look first? Yeah, let's see if that is the size. I, I believe it's 16 by 16, but I could be wrong. A part of this job is um, taking care of, you know, roadside assistance, whether it be a hydraulic line, flat tire, dead battery, uh, anything along those lines. Or sometimes the vehicles, the guys will get in them at the end to come in and they don't want to start. So the heavy equipment operator now is calling, hey, my vehicle don't start. So we have to send a guy out, either throw a battery in or check out why it's not, you know, why it won't run. It's not only a physical thing, it's a thinking thing. You know, you got to be able to think these things through. Yeah. Especially if you're on a call out and you're out in the field. Now this, you know, I mean, yeah, they can touch base. You can call in and, and get assistance. But a lot of times you got to be able to, you know, you got to think on your feet, as they would say. That's the first step. Here comes my parts guy with my fittings. Thank you, Mike. You put the fitting on the end, 3.1. It could take some time. It depends on, um, you know, like right here, we're dealing with one inch line. But if you were to deal with bigger size line, uh, it could take some time. Usually it takes about 20 minutes, a half hour, you know, give or take. That's, that's removing the part, making the line, and possibly putting it back on. And that's what it looks like. That's finished, product. that's finished product. A lot of times I like to add sleeve. What this is, if that line should ever blow out and get a hy uh, hydraulic leak, this restricts it. So instead of spraying, it's just going to ooze out of this, this outer liner. Okay. So it's, it's a protective casing for the operator and whoever is nearby when it actually springs a leak. I said if you're not a good climber, it's hard to get in some of these spots. We're testing the hose that I made, the hydraulic hose, making sure it isn't leaking and uh, all the functions on the truck work properly. When you get a chance and you build up air pressure, can you move it ahead some? When you run the can, because over there we got a Okay, you're clear. Have a good day. That's how you do a hydraulic line. Our mission statement is to provide exceptional public safety services in a safe, compassionate, and professional manner. All of our line personnel are highly trained, state of Florida certified firefighter, EMTs, and paramedics. We cover approximately 105 square miles of the city of Northport and 20 miles of interstate. Camaraderie is important because you start working as a group, you do it in training, and it all seems to come together when you get out on the fire ground and you really need your partners. Everybody knows never to leave your partner and they don't, it's been, they've been trained in it. We have five fire stations located throughout the city in various locations and uh, we are planning number six in West Village's area. We also have all of our fire stations are considered safe places and safe havens. Safe places are for youth who are at risk and are in need of help and they can come walk into any fire station and get the help that they're looking for. Safe Havens for newborns is a different program, different age group where infants can be brought to a fire station without question. All of our fire stations now are hardened facilities so that we can stay in them during storms and everyone stays safe. So if police departments is in there, utilities, public works, whoever we need, 
to go out immediately after the storm and they're there with us to go. A lot of questions that people ask are why we send an ambulance and a fire truck to an EMS call and a lot of that is for manpower. There's a lot of things to do when somebody is having a cardiac incident. So we send the fire truck with them for the extra manpower and lifting assistance and extra help. The whole goal for fire rescue is everybody goes home safe. Frank Lamas, Solid Waste Manager for the City of Northport, back here again today with Let's Recycle Right Northport. Got a few items for you today. Last week, we did notice in the tan lid container, shredded paper put in a plastic bag. Please, shredded paper does not belong in a plastic bag, okay? It belongs right here in a paper bag, please, and it belongs in a tan lid container. This right here, being in plastic, will be considered contamination and garbage. Let's talk about a candle, a glass candle. Yes, it is made of glass, but it is not recyclable right here in Northport. That's right, only glass jars and glass bottles. Put the cap on real nice and tight. This will make it to the process. This will be a number two. Okay, so let's talk about the plastic ring. That's right, the plastic ring. This is a 12 holder. They have six, six holders out there, please. This is not a recyclable material and needs to be placed inside your trash. So listen, put your comments below. We'll see you in a future video. makes me feel important that I'm doing something for the community. I like helping people and I love the work. We got 2.8 inches of rain last night. How I approach it is I got to release some of that water out that we got and get prepared for the next day because you know it's going to rain again. Like I've been draining these for the last two weeks between 16 and 20 inches every day below the wall. And that one little rain, look what it did. For being here so long, you get experience, you get the feel of the water, how the water flows and all that. So if you've done it long enough, you get the feel. I could do this in my sleep because I'm so used to doing it. Yeah, I've been working for the city for 20 years. I'm from North Hills, Pennsylvania. I came down here to help my dad out when I graduated from high school. I started looking for like a future place I can work, retirement, and something's gonna be for, helpful for me in the long run and help people out. So I put an application for the city and they hired me, which was good, best thing that could ever happen. The city's got 30 water control structures, five gated structures. I'm opening uh, at least minimum 15 today. I got three kids, three, two boys and a daughter. And my oldest son gave me my first grandkid. He's, he'll be three. So I spent a lot of time with them because family's first. Oh, I'm a real sports fanatic, big hockey fan. Yeah, I was hoping my Penguins would win it this year, but I can't complain. They won the last two years. <laughs> you can't win it all the time. Yesterday was 16 inches below. It's 10 inches above today. So what I'm doing here now is 
when I open this one up, see how high it is? I'm draining it down. By the end of the day, this should be like 16 inches below the wall. And there's a hard ditch, ditch here, and there's like outfalls that come in. But once you get to a certain level, you'll see the water coming into the canals. And then when I get done, I gotta log it on the computer. What I do is I write the time I was here, when I inspected it, what I did, the water level, and the height. This was like 20.4 20 this morning, and it's almost up to 21. Plus, the water that I'm bringing down raised it a little bit, but you see how it's pushing the water over fast? Each one controls a gate. If you put on auto, it works on the computer. And then manual, this is for gate two. If I wanted to close it, I hit the blue button, I hold it in until the gates get completely closed. If I want to open, I do the vice versa, the other opposite. And there's one for each one. Oh, I love my job. I get to work with good people and we can in enjoy what we're doing when we're at work. That's how I was brought up by my dad. He was real caring about his work and so was I. So like I take I take it do I do take it home. I look at the weather and everything, so I look at the bridge reading and all that. And that should be it. I'll just come back and clean them off. Building Division is responsible for making sure that all the codes that the state has adopted in construction is adhered to. And basically what we do is we look at, we go and do our plan reviews when a customer brings a set of plans in that they want to construct a commercial project or a residential project. We'll review the plans to make sure that they comply with all amenable codes that the state has adopted. After we issue the permit, then we'll go out and do all the inspections and make sure that they are constructed according to the plans. We're responsible for the uh, safe construction of all these buildings and we look at all aspects of the construction from footings, foundations, uh, block walls, to roof construction, plumbing, mechanical, electrical, in both commercial and residential. So when we have a commercial project that comes in, we're looking at all aspects of that to make sure that it is a safe environment to, and it would have to be designed to withstand the 160 mile an hour wind criteria that the state has mandated that we look at. Our job is life safety, is making sure that the building is constructed in a safe manner that it will stand the hurricane designed wind loads that we have down here. And uh, that's what our job is, is to make sure people are safe in their building, that they can walk into their building knowing that Northport has done the best possible job we can to make sure that their, con their building is constructed in a manner that they feel safe in, they can go home in. The Planning and Zoning Division is responsible for all development management of the City of Northport, large-scale commercial developments, residential developments. The City of Northport's Planning and Zoning Division is divided into two separate uh, sections. One is the Strategic Planning Group and the other is the Tactical Planning Group. The Strategic Planning Group is responsible for development management through the preparing and updating of our comprehensive plan, its amendments, all the annexations, and reviewing development of regional impacts and zoning applications. The Strategic Planning Group is also responsible for updating our demographics, population projections, and land use data through GIS, and also maintain our land use and zoning maps. The tactical side of the office is responsible for maintaining the Unified Land Development Code, ensuring all development proposals that are submitted to the city are consistent and in compliance with ULDC, all of our master plans, our pattern books, zoning requirements, and the city's comprehensive plan. Tactical operations also helps coordinate all development proposals through the city departments, the division, and external agencies through our staff development review process managing development's appearance, their architecture, traffic impacts, fiscal impacts, compliance to signage, landscape, and other development management requirements. 
We work closely with utilities, buildings, and public works. We also manage the environmental compliance issues on site development. The Property Standards Division is what's otherwise known as code enforcement in other municipalities. We are located on the first floor of City Hall. Our job is to assure the health, safety, and welfare of our residents and assist in maintaining the community standards. We enforce the Unified Land Development Code, the Northport City Code, and the Florida Building Code. Northport City Code would be like grass and weeds. That's one of our major violations, especially in the summer. Uh, Unified Land Development Code would be like the number of vehicles on a property. Uh, Florida Building Code would be someone building something like a shed or something like that on the property without a permit. The purpose of code enforcement is to make sure that everything's safe in the community, to make sure that everything's being built properly with the proper permits, to make sure that basically everything looks nice. If someone has an issue with a neighbor or a house that they drive by, they do have the option to contact property standards through phone, fax, or our North Report. What's it like? Undescribable. Um, the only word I was using is Armageddon, um, sheer loss, destruction, um, not just wood frame homes. These are concrete structures that are destroyed. Just the compassion that I am thankful that as a crew in, in Northport, we could give them. I mean, if we weren't putting out fires or if we weren't um, finding people to save, it was simply giving them a hug. Um, helping them get some of the furniture out of their house, assisting them with a ladder to their second story because maybe the stairs were wiped out, uh, climbing up in there and, and getting that little piece of home that they wanted back so badly and able to give it to them, and then just listen to their story and, and, their, and, and hear their, about their loss. Personal safety for my family, I will not ride out a storm again. I will not take that chance. Um, if I see it coming up the Gulf towards our city, uh, my family's going to get out. Getting home is unbelievable. So thankful to be home, that my family is safe, to be back here, where this, this simple creature comforts are back at home to have those things back and normal meals. Unbelievable what we saw there, the loss that we saw there and destruction there. Frank Lamas, always manager for the city of Northport. Uh, we're here today to talk about three recycling tips. The first one is plastic bags. Now, plastic bags are not accepted within our recycling program. Plastic bags are not accepted within our recycling program. So let's talk about some of the plastic bags. Grocery bags, okay, they're very important. We see them inside the blue lid container quite often. They need to be returned back to the grocery stores. And that would be your Publix, your Walmarts, your Targets. Please return them back there. Do not place recyclable uh, items inside these bags. Tie them and place them in the blue lid tote. If it goes down to the processor, it is called contaminant. It's contaminated and they will not accept it. So please, keep the grocery bags outside. Now remember, it's not just grocery bags. Okay, we're talking about bread bags, lunch bags, 
uh, big plastic garbage bags that fill the recyclables. And we have one right here to show you. And I'll go ahead and show you. This is what we find out there. This right here is contaminated. All this clean recyclable is contaminated because it's inside a plastic bag. Plastic bags are not accepted within our recycling program. Plastic bags are not accepted within our recycling program. So thank you very much for watching this video. Please, if you have any questions about recycling materials or how to recycle, place it in the comment below and we will try to get to you in a future video. Frank Lamas, always manager for the city of Northport, back here again today with you for Let's Recycle Right Northport. So, a couple of things. We have an aluminum can and a straw. Now the aluminum can right here, 500 million are consumed each day. This is the most valuable recycling item you can see out there in the world today. Let's talk about the plastic straw, okay? The plastic straw, 500 million are used each day. This is not a recyclable item right here in Northport. That's right, even though it's plastic, don't let it fool you. Just because it's plastic, it is not a recyclable material right here inside our program. Now the aluminum can, yes, that is a recyclable item right here in Northport. And Lana, thank you very much for your comment and question. And the question was about plastic bags, uh, water bags, salt bags. These are not a recyclable item right here in Northport. These belong in your trash, please. They belong in the trash, they do not belong in the blue lid container. Bleach bottles, that's right, bleach bottles are a recyclable material right here in Northport, a number two. They belong in the blue lid container. The only thing you'll have to do is make sure they're empty, clean, and dry. If you have any more of the questions or comments, please place them below and we'll get to you in the next video. Thank you very much. We work 24 seven, holidays, uh, there's no time off. Uh, our agency is rapidly growing. We have a, um, a detective bureau, we have a traffic unit, uh, we have a full crime scene unit. Northport PD is an accredited agency. Actually, we're double Excelsior accredited, which is we are one of 14, I believe, other agencies in the state of Florida that have reached that double Excelsior accredited. It's a very prestigious uh, accomplishment to have. Most of the people only see uh, the police officers in uniforms out there doing the day-to-day -day tasks, but they can't do that alone. In the background, what people don't see a lot is the support staff here at Northport Police Department. We go from very high density areas to very rural areas uh, throughout the city. The challenge that Northport Police Department is facing right now is the rapid growth in the city of Northport um, and trying to keep up with those levels of service. Law enforcement officers wear many different hats, um, but at the end of the day, it's their, their problem solvers. Um, they're there for you 24-7, uh, and the, their, their importance of all of our officers that we stress to is to go home safe at night. The Administration Division of Public Works does a variety of different tasks. Uh, the main one is our Customer Service Division. They answer several hundred phone calls a day, ranging from solid waste questions to uh, water drainage questions on a day like today. Also, we have a uh, Budget Finance Administration Division that handles accounts payable, uh, accounts receivable, and budget. 
The Northport Public Works Department also has a technical section that handles GIS, mapping, and um, also our work order system. The engineering division, we analyze any drainage issues that the city might have, water control structures. We're also in charge of all the roadways. The roadways include design for multi-use trails, sidewalks. The city has been experiencing tremendous growth. The biggest project that we have right now is called the Price Boulevard Whitening. That road is a two-lane road. Capacity for that two-lane road is about 17,000 vehicles per day. Uh, our latest numbers for that show that currently there are 21,700 vehicles traveling every day, meaning it's way over capacity. Engineering also is in charge of uh, revising new development. When uh, a new gas station comes, uh, a new hotel or building, they submit plans to us. So it's our responsibility to check that they comply with water treatment the drainage that they got to design the pond and the piping and everything is per code and standards. I have one professional engineer that takes care of all the uh, roadway design. Then I have a stormwater manager. And then we have a group of inspectors. They inspect uh, when there's a new house being built, they got to inspect the, the driveway, the culver pipe, and making sure that it's set up at the right elevation to provide positive flow. They also inspect the roadways on the, through the road bond. They inspect uh, to see that the correct thickness of pavement is being applied. Also, the water control structure, when it gets into construction, we have our own inspector that go and make sure that the project is being built per the plans and specifications. Fleet Division, we have uh, over 600 vehicles and equipment that we maintain. I've got seven mechanics, shop supervisor, two staff assistants, and a fleet asset technician that um, we do everything from cradle to grave for all of our vehicles and uh, equipment. So we order the equipment, maintain the equipment, and ultimately dispose of the equipment. We do everything from weed eaters to all the way to airboats to solid waste vehicles, grapple trucks, uh, solid waste trucks, fire, fire engines, ambulances, police cars, the entire fleet of the city. Well, we're able to maintain all of our own vehicles. That's the biggest thing. So all of our mechanics have a relationship, if you will, with these vehicles. They know the, in, the nuances of all the vehicles. Uh, it makes it easy for our departments to come and see us. We, we, you know, we're an on-site facility for them, so they don't, they don't necessarily have to schedule safety-related issues. They can come directly to us. Um, the city fleet maintenance also carries 44,000 gallons of fuel that we maintain our vehicles with as well got over 200 years of mechanics experience among them so we've got gentlemen who have been here for over 30 years and we've got guys who have been here for just over a year. Public Works Operations Department currently has 71 employees. Of that 71 employees were divided into two sections which is roadway and drainage. Our roadway section takes care of the over 800 miles of roadway and of striping, pothole repairs, all of that is handled by the road section. In the roadway section, we, we maintain all of the street signs, uh, install, replace, we maintain all of the traffic signals. We have 19 traffic signals that we maintain in the city, as well as mowing all the right-of-ways, the vertical mowing to push back the uh, impinging vegetation out of the right-of-ways. In that division, we also have the waterway crew that handles all of our aquatic spraying we have two crews that go out in airboats that spray those waterways to keep the vegetation down. We also have crews that operate all our water control structures. We have 23 gated water control structures that facilitate the movement of the stormwater through the city during storm events uh, and even just our typical rainy season. Then we have our drainage section. It maintains all of our roadside swales, our retention ditches, and all of our pipe installs, our catch basin installs, uh, anything that, that has to do with getting the water from the properties or the roadways into the secondary drainage, which is our retention ditches, and into our canals. Our mission is to ensure the safety and health of our citizens 
through the proper and efficient collection and disposal of all solid waste. We collect uh, over 30,000 residents here in the city. Garbage, garbage bulk, yard waste, uh, yard waste bulk, uh, recycling, also metal. This year, we're probably gonna do about 600 tons more of recyclable material over the last year. So that's pretty awesome. I'll tell you a little story. Uh, myself, I've been here 18 years. And when I first started here at the Solid Waste Division, there was only about 15 people. And right now, we have grown, as the city grows, so have we, uh, we're up to 39 people and employees. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. We also collect from our commercial accounts, collect dumpsters and roll-offs, and from businesses and organizations, and it's starting to really pick up also. Uh, we have about three, over 350 accounts right now, and some of those accounts go maybe three, four, five times a week. Uh, we get 3,300 service requests a month for bulk of garbage and collection. We have some good, good people that work here, so really care about the community. Remember, if you have any questions at, at any time, you can always just give us a call at 941-240-8050. Give us a call, customer service. We'll gladly help you with any questions. Many times, Crisis can't be avoided. A family's car will accidentally break down while their electric bill is due. A health emergency will arise just as it's time to pay the rent. It's a reality that so many people face. What makes the City of Northport unique is that it offers a way to help. The City of Northport Social Services Division connects the public with valuable resources to improve their overall quality of life, especially in unexpected times of hardship. As part of the city manager's office, the Social Services Division's mission is to ensure the availability, awareness, and accessibility of programs and resources in the community, and to assist families and individuals while improving their overall quality of life. With five staff members, including a manager, two full-time caseworkers, a staff assistant one, and a staff assistant two, the Social Services Division assists Northport households experiencing a short-term, unavoidable crisis with financial assistance. Staff can assist with rent or mortgage, utilities, and more. In addition, staff will connect families and individuals with available community resources. The Social Services Division also oversees the City of Northport's Family Service Center and the Community Education Center, located on Pan American Boulevard. Both the Family Service Center and the Community Education Center house a variety of nonprofit and government agencies that provide aid to residents. Located on a campus that includes the Sarasota County Health Department and Children's First, this one-stop location offers a variety of resources that residents would otherwise have to travel outside the city to access. The offices of the Social Services Division are busy. Every Monday morning, Northport residents visit the Social Services Division for what is known as pre-screen Mondays. Clients can meet with a caseworker who gathers basic information about their current situation. From there, referrals and appointments are made to further assist the Northport household. In addition to assisting with rent, mortgage, or utilities, the Social Services Division also is an intake location for families and individuals experiencing homelessness. The division is a one-by-one -one coordinated intake access point. This is a system that has been created to identify eligible resources and connect clients with the appropriate assistance regarding their situation. Outside of their daily operations, the Social Services Division hosts events in the community designed to further connect the public with area resources. Every April, the division works with the Healthy Start of Sarasota County to host a community baby shower and preschool expo. This event features businesses and community agencies that offer information and services for parents of both toddlers and newborns. The division also hosts a back to school resource fair every August to provide school age children supplemental school supplies and backpacks. The fair features exhibitors that provide services for parents with school aged children. During the holidays, Social Services hosts an annual Home for the Holidays program. This program has two parts, a senior giving tree and adopt and shop. In both cases, seniors and parents register with Social Services and are adopted by individuals, businesses, and organizations who help provide a holiday experience. 
Many city departments will adopt families or seniors through this program. Ask your supervisor how you can get involved. There are many other ways that you can help through the Social Services Division. City employees are invited to volunteer time or donate resources. Donations can come in the form of gift cards to gas stations or grocery stores. Monetary donations are also accepted. The Social Services Division and Northport Utilities work together to offer an H2O program in which monetary donations are used to assist Northport households to pay their Northport Utilities bills. Social Services also works with Parks and Recreation to facilitate a youth scholarship program so that our local youth can participate in programs offered by the Parks and Recreation Department. The Social Services Division makes a difference in the lives of Northport residents every day through the services that they provide. If you or someone you know are in a short-term crisis and need assistance, contact the Social Services Division. They are here to help. The Utilities Department is in charge of all water and wastewater services for the City of Northport. We currently serve 17,000 sewer customers and 22,000 water customers throughout the city. The Utilities is comprised of five different divisions. We have our Administration Division, Engineering, Field Operations, our Water Treatment Plant, and our Wastewater Plant. Our administration division has two locations. One is the admin office and field office over on West Price Boulevard next to the high school. Or the other office is our cashiering and customer care office and that is located on the first floor of City Hall. Our engineering division, they oversee all of the utilities projects, uh, new development going in, infrastructure inspections, everything that the city has in the ground has to be located for new construction. Also in the field office on Price Boulevard is our field operations division. They are in charge of maintaining everything out in the distribution and the collection system. They're the ones that do all the new service installations. Anytime there is a break or a repair, they're the ones that respond to that. And we have field operations staff um, available and on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our meter readers are part of our field operations division and those meter readers read every single one of our 22,000 water meters every single month. Our wastewater treatment plant is located on Pan American Boulevard and that plant basically treats all wastewater sewer water throughout the city. And what we do there is we take all that incoming sewage and we treat it to uh, produce reclaimed water. The reclaimed water is pumped out to several parks, city facilities, commercial customers, golf courses and used for irrigation so that way potable water is not used for those purposes. Our Mayakachi Creek water treatment plant is located on Northport Boulevard next to the skate park and that facility is a conventional B class surface water plant that also has a reverse osmosis treatment plant on the same site. Utilities is largely on the front lines whenever, when anything's happening within the city if it's an emergency situation, it's generally utilities that are right in the thick of things, right behind fire. We provide a lot of support to fire. And in instances like Hurricane Irma, as soon as the roads were clear, utilities was right in the thick of things, making sure that we had sanitary sewer and water to be provided to our citizens in their time of need. My name is Dominic Caravella. I'm actually the chief mechanic for the city of Northport for uh, fleet. Well, we do every vehicle that the city owns. We do the entire city. So that includes your PD, fire, um, sanitation, public works, your building department, landscaping, because we do, you know, lawnmowers as small as that all the way on up. Anything the city owns that has a motor on it, we do it here. I oversee the work out here in the shop. I just make sure it's flowing. If somebody has a, a problem or if they're running into something they're not familiar with, uh, then the two of us would get together and try and figure it out and do the best we can and, and get it up and going. I started out when I was young, went to a trade school, graduated from there and started off 
um, doing oil changes and things. Well, I was always interested in transmissions and I became a transmission mechanic for many years. I came down here, I used to vacation down here. My mother-in-law lived here, my in-laws. And uh, when we used to come down and vacation for two weeks, I sort of liked the area. I've got three kids. My daughter is a high school teacher at the high school here in Northport. My son's a, an officer for, for Northport. My wife works for Northport, and I work for Northport. <laughs> and my youngest daughter is uh, in nursing program. She's doing nursing. I got two pieces of fire equipment in here. Now, if we don't repair them or this or that, the fire department's without that equipment, so they can't service the general public. We have to get that thing running, get it fixed best we can, get it back to them, and then they put it in service for the public. It's incredibly important. I mean, all right, we'll take, for instance, that rescue, all right? We're gonna fix that rescue, we're gonna do what we can, right? You call, that rescue comes to your house, boom, somebody's having a heart attack. They throw them in that rescue, they take it. It better make it from point A to point B. So I have to make sure that everything is running as best as it possibly can. That's, that's the matter of life and death. Same thing with a, you know, an officer of the law. If that guy is running, he has to be able to hop in that car. He relies on that thing to start, drive, and perform like he wants it to. My job to keep it working that way so he can do his job. I can't speak for everybody in here. For me, it's a reward of knowing that that vehicle is repaired, it's back out there in the field, it's doing its job, that man's doing his job, so I feel like I did my job. It's just a gratification of doing the repair. I love my job. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really, I can't see myself doing anything else. Um, we have a hydraulic leak, so I gotta change a hydraulic line from the um, tank all the way up to the main control. So we gotta take it off, I gotta get a hand. Steve, can you grab one of them pans from over there, please? One of them drain pans? Thank you. We'll be making a hydraulic hose uh, on our hydraulic machine. Let me get the operator to get his launch bucket out of there. I need you to get your launch bucket. I gotta lift the cab. I gotta get in the back, if you can. We got his, one of his main feed hydraulic hoses. What happened to it? Uh, it blew out. It actually had a hole in it and it was leaking. We're gonna make one right now. I'll show you how we do that. It, where it goes through the clamps, a lot of times it'll rub and it rubbed through. So we get, we get uh, leak from it. So we're just gonna replace the whole thing and we make them here. Uh, we have all the dies. So I just got to get the fittings from the parts department and we're just going to make it. So we generate work orders and then they issue all the parts for the vehicle to be repaired and it basically goes on this work order. Um, I'm going to need some hydraulic fittings. Some, um, I'm making a hydraulic hose. Okay, how many do you need? Uh, two. Um, you want to get those first, and then we'll, or you want me to look first? Yeah, let's see if that is the size. I, I believe it's 16 by 16, but I could be wrong. A part of this job is um, taking care of, you know, roadside assistance, whether it be a hydraulic line, flat tire, dead battery, uh, anything along those lines. Or sometimes the vehicles, the guys will get in them at the end to come in, yep. and they don't want to start. So the heavy equipment operator now is calling, hey, my vehicle don't start. So we have to send a guy out, either throw a battery in or check out why it's not, you know, why it won't run. It's not only a physical thing, it's a thinking thing. You know, you got to be able to think these things through. Especially if you're on a call out and you're out in the field. Now there's, you know, I mean, yeah, they can touch base, you can call in and, and get assistance. But a lot of times you got to be able to, you know, you got to think on your feet, as they would say. That's the first step. Here comes my parts guy with my fittings. Thank you, Mike.
You put the fitting on the end, 3.1. It could take some time. It depends on, um, you know, like right here we're dealing with one inch line, but if you were to deal with bigger size line, uh, it could take some time. Usually it takes about 20 minutes, a half hour, you know, give or take. That's, that's removing the part, making the line, and possibly putting it back on. And that's what it looks like. That's finished product. That's finished product. A lot of times I like to add sleeve what this is, if that line should ever blow out and get a uh, hydraulic leak, this restricts it. So instead of spraying, it's just going to ooze out of this, this outer liner. Okay. So it's, it's a protective casing for the operator and whoever is nearby when it actually springs a leak. I said, if you're not a good climber, it's hard to get in some of these spots. We're testing the hose that I made, the hydraulic hose, making sure it isn't leaking, and uh, all the functions on the truck work properly. When you get a chance and you build up air pressure, could you move it ahead some? When you run the can, because over there we got a... Okay, you're clear. Have a good day. That's how you do a hydraulic line. Our mission statement is to provide exceptional public safety services in a safe, compassionate, and professional manner. All of our line personnel are highly trained, state of Florida certified firefighter, EMTs, and paramedics. We cover approximately 105 square miles of the city of Northport and 20 miles of interstate. Camaraderie is important because you start working as a group, you do it in training, and it all seems to come together when you get out on the fire ground and you really need your partners. Everybody knows never to leave your partner and they don't, it's been, they've been trained in it. We have five fire stations located throughout the city in various locations and uh, we are planning number six in West Village's area. We also have all of our fire stations are considered safe places and safe havens. Safe places are for youth who are at risk and are in need of help and they can come walk into any fire station and get the help that they're looking for. Safe havens for newborns is a different program, different age group where infants can be brought to a fire station without question. All of our fire stations now are hardened facilities so that we can stay in them during storms and everyone stays safe. So police departments is in there, utilities, public works, whoever we need to go out immediately after the storm, then they're there with us to go. A lot of questions that people ask are why we send an ambulance and a fire truck to an EMS call and a lot of that is for manpower. There's a lot of things to do when somebody is having a cardiac incident. So we send the fire truck with them for the extra manpower and lifting assistance and extra help. The whole goal for fire rescue is everybody goes home safe. Frank Lamas, Solid Waste Manager for the City of Northport, back here again today with Let's Recycle Right Northport. Got a few items for you today. Last week, we did notice in the tan lid container, shredded paper put in a plastic bag. Please, shredded paper does not belong in a plastic bag, okay? It belongs right here in a paper bag, please. And it belongs in a tan lid container. This right here, being in plastic, will be considered contamination and garbage. Let's talk about a candle, a glass candle. Yes, it is made of glass, but it is not recyclable right here in Northport. That's right, only glass jars and glass bottles are recyclable in the blue lid container. Let's also talk about the milk jug, water jug, number two, definitely recyclable, right? Here's the cap. If the cap is not attached, it will be garbage. So if you crush it down, Put the cap on real nice and tight. 
This will make it to the process. This will be a number two. Okay, so let's talk about the plastic ring. That's right, the plastic ring. This is a 12 holder. They have six, six holders out there. Please, this is not a recyclable material. It needs to be placed inside your trash. So listen, put your comments below. We'll see you in a future video. makes me feel important that I'm doing something for the community. I like helping people and I love the work. We got 2.8 inches of rain last night. How I approach it is I gotta release some of that water out that we got and get prepared for the next day because you know it's gonna rain again. It's like I've been draining these for the last two weeks between 16 and 20 inches every day below the wall. And that one little rain, look what it did. For being here so long, you get experience, you get the feel of the water, how the water flows and all that. So if you've done it long enough, you get the feel. I could do this in my sleep, but I'm so used to doing it. Yeah, I've been working for the city for 20 years. I'm from North Hills, Pennsylvania. I came down here to help my dad out when I graduated from high school. I started looking for like a future place I can work, retirement, and something's gonna be for, helpful for me in the long run and help people out. So I put an application for the city and they hired me, which was good, best thing that could ever happen. City's got 30 water control structures, five gated structures. I'm opening uh, at least minimum 15 today. I got three kids, three, two boys and a daughter. And my oldest son gave me my first grandkid. He's, he'll be three. So I spent a lot of time with them. Because family's first. Oh, I'm a real sports fanatic, big hockey fan. Yeah, I was hoping my Penguins would win it this year, but I can't complain. They won the last two years. You can't win it all the time. Yesterday was 16 inches below. It's 10 inches above today. So what I'm doing here now is when I open this one up, so how high it is, I'm draining it down. By the end of the day, this should be like 16 inches below the wall. And there's a hard ditch, hard, hard ditch here, and there's like outfalls that come in. Once you get to a certain level, you'll see the water coming into the canals. And then when I get done, I gotta log it on the computer. What I do is I write the time I was here, when I inspected it, what I did, the water level, and the height. This was like 20.4 this morning, and it's almost up to 21. Plus, the water that I'm bringing down raised it a little bit, but you see how it's pushing the water over fast? Each one controls a gate. If you put it on auto, it works on the computer. And then the manual, this is for gate two. If I wanted to close it, I hit the blue button, I hold it in until the gates can completely close. If I want to open it, I do the vice versa, the other opposite. And there's one for each one. Oh, I love my job. I get to work with good people. 
and we can in, enjoy what we're doing when we're at work. That's how I was brought up by my dad. He was real caring about his work, and so was I. So, like, I take, I take it, do, I do take it home. I look at the weather and everything. So, I look at the bridge reading and all that. And that should be it. I'll just come back and clean them off. Building Division is the responsible for making sure that all the codes that the state has adopted in construction is adhered to. And basically what we do is we look at, we go and do our plan reviews when the customer brings a set of plans in that they want to construct a commercial project or a residential project. We'll review the plans to make sure that they comply with all amenable codes that the state has adopted. After we issue the permit, then we'll go out and do all the inspections and make sure that they are constructed according to the plans. We're responsible for the uh, safe construction of all these buildings and we look at all aspects of the construction from footings, foundations, uh, block walls, to roof construction, plumbing, mechanical, electrical, in both commercial and residential. So when we have a commercial project that comes in, we're looking at all aspects of that to make sure that it is a safe environment to, and it would have to be designed to withstand the 160 mile an hour wind criteria that the state has mandated that we look at. Our job is life safety, just making sure that the building is constructed in a safe manner that it will stand the hurricanes designed wind loads that we have down here. And uh, that's what our job is, is to make sure people are safe in their buildings, that they can walk into their building knowing that Northport has done the best possible job we can to make sure that their, con their building is constructed in a manner that they feel safe in, they can go home in. The Planning and Zoning Division is responsible for all development management of the City of Northport, large-scale commercial developments, residential developments. The City of Northport's Planning and Zoning Division is divided into two separate uh, sections. One is the Strategic Planning Group and the other is the Tactical Planning Group. The Strategic Planning Group is responsible for development management through the preparing and updating of our comprehensive plan, its amendments, all the annexations, and reviewing development of regional impacts and zoning applications. The Strategic Planning Group is also responsible for updating our demographics, population projections, and land use data through GIS, and also maintain our land use and zoning maps. The tactical side of the office is responsible for maintaining the Unified Land Development Code, ensuring all development proposals that are submitted to the city are consistent and in compliance with ULDC, all of our master plans, our pattern books, zoning requirements, and the city's comprehensive plan. Tactical Operations also helps coordinate all development proposals through the city departments, the division, and external agencies through our staff development review process managing development's appearance, their architecture, traffic impacts, fiscal impacts, compliance to signage, landscape, and other development management requirements. We work closely with utilities, building, and public works. We also manage the environmental compliance issues on site development. The Property Standards Division is what's otherwise known as code enforcement in other municipalities. We are located on the first floor of City Hall, our job is to assure the health, safety, and welfare of our residents and assist in maintaining the community standards. We enforce the Unified Land Development Code, the Northport City Code, and the Florida Building Code. Northport City Code would be like grass and weeds. That's one of our major violations, especially in the summer. Uh, Unified Land Development Code would be like the number of vehicles on a property. Uh, Florida Building Code would be someone building something like a shed or something like that on the property without a permit. The purpose of code enforcement is to make sure that everything's safe in the communities, to make sure that everything's being built properly with the proper permits, to make sure that basically everything looks nice. If someone has an issue with a neighbor or a house that they drive by, they do have the option to contact property standards through the phone, fax, or our North Report.
what's it like? Undescribable. Um, the only word I was using is Armageddon. Um, sheer loss, destruction, um, not just wood frame homes. These are concrete structures that are destroyed. Just the compassion that I am thankful that as a crew in, in Northport, we could give them. I mean, if we weren't putting out fires or if we weren't um, finding people to save, it was simply giving them a hug, um, helping them get some of the furniture out of their house, assisting them with a ladder to the second story because maybe the stairs were wiped out, uh, climbing up in there and, and getting that little piece of home that they wanted back so badly and able to give it to them, and then just listen to their story and, and, their, and, and hear their, about their loss. personal safety for my family, I will not ride out a storm again. I will not take that chance. Um, if I see it coming up the Gulf towards our city, uh, my family's gonna get out. Getting home is unbelievable. So thankful to be home, that my family is safe, to be back here, where the simple creature comforts are back at home to have those things back and normal meals. Unbelievable what we saw there, the loss that we saw there and destruction there. Frank Lamas, always manager for the city of Northport. Uh, we're here today to talk about three recycling tips. The first one is plastic bags. Now, plastic bags are not accepted within our recycling program. Plastic bags are not accepted within our recycling program. So let's talk about some of the plastic bags. Grocery bags, okay, they're very important. We see them inside the blue lid container quite often. They need to be returned back to the grocery stores. And that would be your Publix, your Walmarts, your Targets. Please return them back there. Do not place recyclable uh, items inside these bags. Tie them and place them in the blue lid tote. If it goes down to the processor, it is called contaminant. It's contaminated and they will not accept it. So please, keep the grocery bags outside. Now remember, it's not just grocery bags. Okay, we're talking about bread bags, lunch bags, uh, big plastic garbage bags that fill the recyclables. And we have one right here to show you. And I'll go ahead and show you. This is what we find out there. This right here is contaminated. All this clean recyclable is contaminated because it's inside a plastic bag. Plastic bags are not accepted within our recycling program. Plastic bags are not accepted within our recycling program. So thank you very much for watching this video. Please, if you have any questions about recycling materials or how to recycle, place it in the comment below and we will try to get to you in a future video. Frank Lamas, always manager for the city of Northport, back here again today with you for Let's Recycle Right Northport. So, a couple of things. We have an aluminum can and a straw. Now the aluminum can right here, 500 million are consumed each day. This is the most valuable recycling item you can see out there in the world today. Let's talk about the plastic straw, okay? The plastic straw, 500 million are used each day. This is not a recyclable item right here in Northport. That's right, even though it's plastic, don't let it fool you. Just because it's plastic, it is not a recyclable material right here inside our program. Now the aluminum can, yes, that is a recyclable item right here in Northport. And Lana, thank you very much for your comment and question. And the question was about plastic bags, uh, water bags, salt bags. These are not a recyclable item 
right here in Northport. These belong in your trash, please. They belong in the trash, they do not belong in the blue lid container. Bleach bottles, that's right, bleach bottles are a recyclable material right here in Northport, a number two. They belong in the blue lid container. The only thing you'll have to do is make sure they're empty, clean, and dry. If you have any more of the questions or comments, please place them below and we'll get to you in the next video. Thank you very much. What makes this place so special is, is the people. Um, the, the community who you serve and the people who you work with. Our mission statement is to provide the community with the elite law enforcement services out there with the highest priority being the protection of life and property. We work 24-7, holidays, uh, there's no time off. Uh, our agency is rapidly growing. We have a, um, a detective bureau, we have a traffic unit, uh, we have a full crime scene unit. Northport PD is an accredited agency. Actually, we're double Excelsior accredited, which is we are one of 14, I believe, other agencies in the state of Florida that have reached that double Excelsior credit. It's a very prestigious uh, accomplishment to have. Most of the people only see uh, the police officers in uniforms out there doing the day-to-day -day tasks, but they can't do that alone. In the background, what people don't see a lot is the support staff here at Northport Police Department. We go from very high density areas to very rural areas uh, throughout the city. The challenge that Northport Police Department is facing right now is the rapid growth in the city of Northport um, and trying to keep up with those levels of service. Law enforcement officers wear many different hats, um, but at the end of the day, it's their, their problem solvers. Um, they're there for you 24 seven, uh, and the, their, their importance of all of our officers that we stress to is to go home safe at night. The Administration Division of Public Works does a variety of different tasks. Uh, the main one is our Customer Service Division. They answer several hundred phone calls a day, ranging from solid waste questions to uh, water drainage questions on a day like today. Also, we have a uh, Budget Finance Administration Division that handles accounts payable, uh, accounts receivable, and budget. The Northport Public Works Department also has a technical section that handles GIS, mapping, and um, also our work order system. In the engineering division, we analyze any drainage issues that the city might have, water control structures. We're also in charge of all the roadways. The roadways include design for multi-use trails, sidewalks, the city has been experiencing tremendous growth. The biggest project that we have right now is called the Price Boulevard Whitening. That road is a two-lane road. Capacity for that two-lane road is about 17,000 vehicles per day. Uh, our latest numbers for that show that currently there are 21,700 vehicles traveling every day, meaning it's way over capacity. Engineering also is in charge of uh, revising new development. When uh, a new gas station comes, uh, a new hotel or building, 
they submit plans to us. So it's our responsibility to check that they comply with water treatment, the drainage that they gotta design the pond and the piping and everything is per code and standards. I have one professional engineer that takes care of all the uh, roadway design, then I have a stormwater manager, and then we have a group of inspectors. They inspect uh, when there's a new house being built, they gotta inspect the, the driveway, the culvert pipe, and making sure that it's set up at the right elevation to provide positive flow. They also inspect the roadways on the, through the road bond. They inspect uh, to see that the correct thickness of pavement is being applied. Also, the water control structure, when it gets into construction, we have our own inspector that go and make sure that the project is being built per the plans and specifications. Fleet Division, we have uh, over 600 vehicles and equipment that we maintain. I've got seven mechanics, shop supervisor, two staff assistants, and a fleet asset technician that um, we do everything from cradle to grave for all of our vehicles and uh, equipment. So we order the equipment, maintain the equipment, and ultimately dispose of the equipment. We do everything from weed eaters to all the way to airboats to solid waste vehicles, grapple trucks, uh, the solid waste trucks, fire, fire engines, ambulances, police cars, the entire fleet of the city. Well, we're able to maintain all of our own vehicles. That's the biggest thing. So all of our mechanics have a relationship, if you will, with these vehicles. They know the, in, the nuances of all the vehicles. Uh, it makes it easy for our departments to come and see us. We, we, you know, we're an on-site facility for them, so they don't, they don't necessarily have to schedule safety-related issues. They can come directly to us. Um, the city fleet maintenance also carries 44,000 gallons of fuel that we maintain our vehicles with as well got over 200 years of mechanics experience among them so we've got gentlemen who have been here for over 30 years and we've got guys who have been here for just over a year. Public Works Operations Department currently has 71 employees. Of that 71 employees were divided into two sections which is roadway and drainage. Our roadway section takes care of the over 800 miles of roadway of striping, pothole repairs, all of that is handled by the road section. In the roadway section, we, we maintain all of the street signs, uh, install, replace, we maintain all of the traffic signals. We have 19 traffic signals that we maintain in the city, as well as mowing all the right-of-ways, the vertical mowing to push back the uh, impinging vegetation out of the right-of-ways. In that division, we also have the waterway crew that handles all of our aquatic spraying we have two crews that go out in airboats that spray those waterways to keep the vegetation down. We also have crews that operate all our water control structures. We have 23 gated water control structures that facilitate the movement of the stormwater through the city during storm events uh, and even just our typical rainy season. Then we have our drainage section. It maintains all of our roadside swales, our retention ditches, and all of our pipe installs, our catch basin installs, uh, anything that, that has to do with getting the water from the properties or the roadways into the secondary drainage, which is our retention ditches, and into our canals. Our mission is to ensure the safety and health of our citizens through the proper and efficient collection and disposal of all solid waste. We collect uh, over 30,000 residents here in the city. Garbage, garbage bulk, yard waste, uh, yard waste bulk, uh, recycling, also metal. This year, we're probably gonna do about 600 tons more of recyclable material over the last year. So that's pretty awesome. I'll tell you a little story. Uh, myself, I've been here 18 years. And when I first started here at the Solid Waste Division, there was only about 15 people. And right now, we have grown, as the city grows, so have we, uh, we're up to 39 people and employees. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. We also collect from our commercial accounts, we collect dumpsters and roll offs and from businesses and organizations, and it's starting to really pick up also. Uh, we have about three, over 350 accounts right now, and some of those accounts go maybe three, four, five times a week. Uh, we get 3,300 service requests a month for bulk of garbage and collection. We have some good, good people that work here, so really care about the community. Remember, if you have any questions at any time, 
You can always just give us a call at 941-240-8050. Give us a call, customer service. They're glad we help you with any questions. Many times, crisis can't be avoided. A family's car will accidentally break down while their electric bill is due. A health emergency will arise just as it's time to pay the rent. It's a reality that so many people face. What makes the City of Northport unique is that it offers a way to help. The City of Northport Social Services Division connects the public with valuable resources to improve their overall quality of life, especially in unexpected times of hardship. As part of the City Manager's Office, the Social Services Division's mission is to ensure the availability, awareness, and accessibility of programs and resources in the community, and to assist families and individuals while improving their overall quality of life. With five staff members, including a manager, two full-time caseworkers, a staff assistant one,
Welcome back, everybody. It's 4.01. Uh, just quick roll call. We have uh, Vice Mayor Luke, myself, Mayor McDowell, and Commissioner Hanks um, here. So we do have a quorum. Commissioner Carasone and Commissioner Emmerich will not be able to join us for this part of our meeting. We also have City Manager, City Attorney, and our City Clerk and Recording Secretary, Ms. Susan. So uh, at this time, we'll go down below and uh, do our proclamations and, and recognitions. Oh, All right. Can you guys hear me? All right. Keep getting reminded this is my last one. It is. All right, so we got Cyber Security Awareness Month. Where's my cyber guys and gals, if I have any? Get all up in here in my COVID space. <laughs> Appreciate you guys. Whereas we recognize the vital role that technology has in our daily lives and in the future of our nation, whereby many citizens, schools, businesses, and other organizations use the internet for a variety of tasks and critical infrastructure sections are increasingly reliant on information systems to support financial services, energy, telecommunications, transportation utilities, healthcare, and emergency response system. And whereas the internet, the internet users and our information infrastructure face an increasing threat of malicious cyber attack. Significant financial and personal privacy losses due to identity theft and fraud. And whereas the City of Northport Information Technology Division, in conjunction with the City of Northport Police Department, provides a comprehensive approach to help enhance the security of the City of Northport. And whereas the city desires to bring greater awareness around these issues to both city staff and the citizens of Northport, now therefore we, the City Commission of the City of Northport, Florida, do hereby proclaim the month of October as Cyber Security Awareness Month. And we set our hands and seal of the City of Northport to be affixed on this first day of October 2020. All right, well, we just want to thank everyone um, for everything that uh, that the city has done for us, um, for acknowledging cybersecurity, how important it is to our community. And we're going to pass this off to the distinguished gentleman of the city hall. Uh, we just uh, greatly appreciate the emphasis that this month provides on something that should be a year-round activity for for not only the the departments within the city, but also the citizens. And uh, I know the police do an excellent uh, job at outreach and training citizens, and uh, we want to support them and, and support our teams as best as we can. And we thank the commission for declaring the month uh, extra emphasis. Thank you very much, you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Fire prevention. Come on down. Hey, these guys know what's going on. <laughs> this is for fire prevention week. Whereas the Fire Prevention Week is October 4th through the 10th, 2020, and is, vital, is a vital public service with members of Northport Fire Rescue committed to ensure the safety and security of all those living in, doing business, and visiting Northport. Whereas fire is a serious public safety concern, both locally and nationally, and homes are the locations where people are at greatest risk from fire, 
And whereas home fires killed more than 2,770 people in the United States in 2019, according to the National Fire Protection Association, and fire departments in the United States responded to 359,500 home fires. And whereas cooking is the leading cause of home fires, especially in my house, uh, United States where fire departments responded to more than 173,200 annually between 2013 and 2017. And whereas two of every five home fires start in the kitchen, with 31% of these fires resulting from unattended cooking, and whereas children under five face a higher risk of non-fire <clears throat> non burns associated with cooking than being burned in a cooking fire, and whereas Northport residents should keep a three-foot kid-free zone around cooking areas, I'm in trouble. <laughs> and whereas residents... This is why we have this week, so that I can be educated on, on all this stuff. Whereas working smoke alarms, actually sorry, whereas residents who have planned and practiced a home fire escape plan are more prepared, we've done that, and will therefore be more likely to survive a fire, and whereas working smoke alarms cut the risk of dying in reported home fires in half, and whereas Northport residents are responsive to public education measures and able to take personal steps to increase their safety from fire, and whereas working smoke alarms cut the risk of dying, did I already read that? Reported homes in half? All right. Yeah, but there's a glare. <laughs> Well, we got to get that point across. Whereas the 2020 Fire Prevention Week theme, serve up fire safety in the kitchen, effectively serves to remind us to stay alert and use caution when cooking to reduce the risk of kitchen fires. Now, therefore, we, the city commission, uh, commissioners of the city of Northport, Florida, do hereby proclaim October 4th through October 10th, 2020, as Fire Prevention Week throughout the community. And we urge all the people of Northport to check their kitchens for fire hazards and use safe cooking practices to support the many public safety activities and efforts of Northport's Fire Rescue during Fire Prevention Week 2020. In witness hereof, yay. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> I was out of breath. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, I don't like sharing my uh, month with everyone, but I guess I have no choice. So um, I, I do accept this on behalf of the Northport Fire Rescue. Um, Without the help from everyone in the community, as well as the commission and mayor, vice mayor, city manager, and all the employees of the city, we wouldn't be able to do this. Um, we uh, do a lot for the community. I believe it's a, uh, tremendous efforts that are given each and every day. And uh, I can't say it enough that thank you. Um, I still can't believe I have to share this month with anyone else. So, um, but I realize I have to. So. Um, thank you again, and like I said, whoops, uh, there was a second page, he didn't want to read it. Uh, we'll let him have that one. But, and they gave you the longest one because they knew you were the last day. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so we're going to do, on a more serious note, the Domestic Violence Awareness Month. We got some folks coming down. Thank you. I don't know. Is it Spark? Okay. All righty. So this is a proclamation. Whereas domestic violence is a serious crime that affects people of all ages, income levels, and anger, but most often women and children, and once started, the campaign of physical and psychological, economic, and domestic violence only gets worse resulting in the heavy burden on society and families. Whereas 105,298 domestic violence offenses were reported in the state of Florida in 2019 and 162 incidences reported in Northport. Whereas Safe Place and Rape Crisis Center, SPARC, provides free services to victims of domestic violence and sexual assault and their children in Sarasota and DeSoto counties seeks to stop the crime of domestic violence through awareness and education and encourages every citizen to actively engage in public and private efforts, including conversations about domestic violence and how to prevent it, how to help survivors connect with services, and how every segment of society can work together to better address domestic violence. 
Now, therefore, we, the City Commission of the City of Northport, do hereby proclaim October 20th, Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And yes, you have to share it with the fire department. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, commissioners, for uh, recognizing you know, for recognizing this month as it is very important. Obviously, domestic violence is something that impacts every community. Many times, it's behind the closed doors that we don't often see. Our men and women respond to these calls on a daily basis, and it's very unfortunate. Organizations like Spark that works closely, and thank you for recognizing them because they are the resources we send our victims to. And without these resources, the daily jobs our men and women do would be much harder to do. It's the services we provide, the counseling especially when these children are involved in these homes, and it's very critical that we work these cases effectively. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All righty, so now we're going to do recognitions. All right, uh, David Iannotti, are you here? All right, this is a certificate of appreciation in recognition of his personal commitment and dedication to the city of Northport while serving on the Beautification and Tree Scenic Highway Committee from January 2nd, 2020 through August 12th of 2020. Thank you for your service, David. Uh, Eve Sweeting. Come on down. Hello. How are you? Fantastic. This is in recognition of your personal commitment and dedication to the City of Northport while serving on the Charter Review Advisory Board from September 25th, 2018 through September 25th, 2020. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for serving. Hopefully you'll join another advisory board. All right. How about uh, Melanie Brewer? This is in recognition of her personal commitment and dedication to the City of Northport while serving on the Charter Review Advisory Board from September 25th, 2018 through September 25th, 2020. Thank you. And Mason Thull. This is in recognition of his personal commitment and dedication to the City of Northport while serving on the Parks and Rec Advisory Board from July 23rd, 2019 through July 23rd, 2020. And since Vice Mayor hasn't spoke, we're going to leave this one for her. And we need Miss Nita Hester. No. You haven't spoke. <laughs> Do you want to bring your... No. Nah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you started to get up. Okay. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> All right. Okay, Miss Nita. This is in recognition of your personal commitment and dedication to the city of Northport for preparing all the in-house maps for the first time in the city's history that were required from 1996 through 1997's comp plan update and leading and managing all the department and implementation of the city's GIS program and implementing project management for all IT projects in 2010 and serving as the IT project manager from 2010 through 2015 and coordinating and leading the city's annual GIS day. Such a fun day. Bringing awareness to our staff and community and implementing a new GIS infrastructure and created the Northport Enterprise Portal for the city staff and citizens use. And Ms. Nita has served as a dedicated employee to the city of Northport for 29 and a half years. Wow. Thank you very much. This is for you. Okay. It has been my honor and privilege to serve the city, and I'm not done yet. No, you're not. <laughs> I'm still here, and I plan to be here for a lot of years to be available for whatever the city needs. And you're serving on our Planning and Zoning Advisory Board right now as an alternate. Thank you. I have to thank you for an excellent job done. Uh, I've attended the GIS days, and a cus or citizen would walk in, they'd have a question. By the end of the day, she had a map made for them. Uh, she would execute things so quickly to help us, to help everybody within the city to do their job better. Um, thank you so very, very much. 
Thank you so much. How do you get a call out when you need maps? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you want a picture with your husband up there? No. no. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ms. Nita. All right. All righty, before we adjourn the meeting, uh, city manager, seeing that it's fire prevention month and we're getting back our city kind of back to normal. Are we reinstituting the um, smoke alarm battery program? I would imagine so. Sorry. I would imagine that yes, we are, but I'll check with the fire chief who is out right now. Fantastic. If you could let us know so that we can let our citizens know because that's something we, we really need to get back up and going. No, I agree. And, and it's typically done around um, the time changes. Right. So, yeah, I'll, I'll find out for you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Is there anything else, guys? All right, so it's 417. We are adjourned. Have a great evening.